And we are live. Gentlemen, cool. what's going on? Not a whole lot. Not a ton. Well, welcome. All right, so uh, welcome to another exciting installment of the Left Unread podcast. Mm. Uh, this is, uh, in today's episode, we will have two guests. He is Ian Miller, and you know him from such a uh, podcast as Productive Outs, and miscarriage of justice Oof. and um that other new one that you do, do that you do that i don't know the name of yeah film basics with uh ross hurt on the rigs of dad network yep and he is patrick from the brand new podcast and one that i really enjoy listening to this is bad about terrible cbs shows what's going on patrick not a whole lot um Took a break from watching terrible CBS sitcoms to uh, watch a terrible movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So. Wait, I thought we were supposed to watch Alexander. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it, it fucking yeah. ruled. <laughs> episode uh i uh imposed upon everybody to watch um oliver stone's three and a half hour long biopic about alexander the great called alexander the ultimate cut which came out in 2014 mm. and uh is was actually done after the final cut so um, yeah this is this is oliver stone's fourth recut of his <laughs> yeah. his epic histor history in air yeah. quotes, uh, film, Alexander, um, the infamous theatrical cut, which is is the bearer of the famously low Rotten Tomatoes score and pretty much panned by everybody. And it's been recut yeah. several times, um, culminating, I think, in the longest cut, which was the final cut. And he said, I yeah, will never then, do this again. And then he felt yeah, like he had Yeah, and then he much. trimmed 10 minutes of fat <laughs> to mm. create the ultimate cut. Yeah. Uh, down from three hours and 35 minutes to just a paltry three hours and 25 minutes. <laughs> and uh, I got to say, for uh, for a movie that's about a guy that, you know, conquered a lot of the known world uh, in a span of 10 years, this movie was unbelievably fucking boring. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, it's like no, some yeah, of the most interesting no. subject matter of all time. And nothing happens in this movie. It's just, well, like, really bad acting and really bad accents. <laughs> As, like, I, I have some thoughts on the accents. The what was that? I have, I have some thoughts on the, uh, the accents. Mm, we, can, yeah. we can get into that. But I'm just, just marking that for the record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, in particular, I really liked Rosario Dawson's accent. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she it was, was phenomenal. <laughs> It's sort of like a generic, well, uh, like Hollywood, like Middle Eastern accent where it's, yeah. you can't really place it. It's not really from any country. It sort of reminded me of uh, the sort of generic accents everyone tried to put on to sound like Amazons in uh, yeah. in in the DC universe. I think they, um, I well. think they did that accent to sound like Gal Gadot. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that's yeah. exactly so. why that went down. Yeah, they yeah. sort of did a weird Israeli Hebrew accent to so yeah. that she didn't stick out as bad. Right. Yeah. I think they did something like this in Alexander, which is I'll mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm not a big uh, stickler for like, you know, the accents actors use in a historical film like this. Like, yeah. I don't think they're speaking English. I think if they don't go try to, you know, recreate right. a historical Macedonia accent, whatever, it's fine. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the sword and the sandal genre is obviously uh, associated with the British accent for characters and roles like this. But um, 
I will say having Alexander with a a thick Irish brogue, I think did give it like a little bit of a, you know, Doctor Who meets Alexander the Great kind of feel. (laughs) But I will say beyond that, beyond that, the one that's weirder for me is uh, Jared Leto, who plays Hephaestion in the film, also does an Irish accent, which is not his natural accent. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So does he? Uh, kind of slips in and out of it, but yeah, they're basically Oliver Stone's just saying like, yeah, this is what they sounded like. Right. You know, yeah. the ancient Macedonians wore you know Aaron sweaters and uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you know. My, my favorite one was um the guy who plays the Hound in Game of Thrones. Is Rory McCann was in this movie, yes. yeah. and he speaks with like the thickest Scottish accent. Right. It's so funny. <laughs> Rory McCann rules, and I also yeah. I feel like we need to call out uh, what's her face for uh, Angelina Jolie and her like mm-hmm. strange Eastern European like yeah. continental Russian accent. Like I'm wondering how she got that as a barbarian princess. So yeah. I, I think, and I don't want to put words in Oliver Stone's genius mouth, but. Uh, I think that what we're looking at here is an attempt to display the difference in Greek cultures, which I think is an admirable attempt. Um, Greece was made up of four different tribes, and they're linguistically very different. And you might know them from, like, the music modes, so, like, Aeolian, Ionian, Dorian. These are all the the ancient Greek tribes. Um, And the Macedonians and the people from Epirus, which is Mm -hmm. where uh, Olympias, Angelina Jolie, is from, were... Uh, culturally distinct and I think that and it's a little offensive to the Irish but I feel like the idea of having all of the Macedonians be sort of Scottish and Irish is to make them these sort of rustic northern sheep herders to like the British accented uh, true Greeks uh, who would have that sort of posh you know, oh, yes, I'm from Athens, you know. And Christopher Plummer and Brian Blessed, all the Shakespearean guys. Brian Blessed, man. Whew. It was so crazy. happy. To I, see I forgot him. he was in this. So I do. I do him. consider it pretty offensive to the Irish. I consider it a form of green face. Honestly, I don't think it's any, yeah. <laughs> any <laughs> different than casting than Martin Scorsese's problematic history of catch, casting uh, Italians in uh, Irish ex roles. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Most recently, of course, <laughs> in the sex. Irish Man. Right. Um, <laughs> this motherfucker said Irish ex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I like that. Although uh, De Niro, I've, o- I've only Irish, ever seen though. the word written. I'm not sure how you actually say it. Yeah, <laughs> we could say like Celtex, you know. Celtex. Yeah. I feel like the Scots got a little shade in this as well, and uh, you know, throwing yeah. and Jonathan Rhys Myers, who I believe is yeah. Welsh, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, you know who is Welsh? Anthony Hopkins, Ptolemy. So they're, they're all in there, just being forced to bastardize their beautiful cultures. Yeah, uh, now, I haven't seen the original one in, like, well over a decade. Did Anthony Hopkins have a bigger part in the original one? I want to say he had a smaller part. So Really? Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure we'll get to this when we go through the chronology, but yeah, I remember seeing the original, granted it was a long time ago, and feeling like it was kind of funny that he was sort of in the beginning, and then, like, every 40 minutes, there's, like, a snippet of him doing voiceover for a little exposition. Right, yeah. It was like, and then Alexander made his way to India. And they skip all the cool stuff that you could see, like, of the journey to India. And they're just, like, going from boudoir shot to boudoir shot of him just, like, yeah. drunkenly fawning over <laughs> Hephaestion and, and then the next guy and then the next guy. And, yeah. Um, yep. And in this one, he... From he, eunuch to eunuch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and in this one, it's sort of the same, except they give him, like, a 25-minute monologue just, like, nailed on <laughs> to the end. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, I'll just say right now, I think that's the most interesting part of the film in terms of, like, <laughs> its historical explanations of what happened and what went on. And at the same time, it's, like, the lamest plot device of all time. And they're just like, oh, here's why everything you just saw mattered and what it all meant. And we're going to have, like, a famous Shakespearean, like, break down why this movie existed and, like, what it was about for you. And mm-hmm. so I felt really torn about it, you know, because it was, like, Okay, cool. Here's like the most information about Alexander the Great we've gotten in the last three hours. But also, yeah. like from a movie standpoint, this sucks so bad to have to sit through. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get into this, but I thought it was, a, and I don't remember how the original theatrical cut went. And so if 
I, I can't imagine we're not going to discuss this, but I thought it was a very strange choice for Oliver Stone to tell this whole thing like out of chronological order. Like, oh, dude, dude yeah. it was like a fucking Quentin Tarantino movie. Exactly. I mean, and, yeah, Tarantino exactly. is the person is is always the yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a historical thing, and you're you're jumping around, you know, decades at a time. Why not just tell the thing in chronological order? Is it just that it was 2004, or I guess it was 2014 when he recut this? So, right. Yeah. Like, it, can, can are you just not allowed to show a movie in chronological order anymore? Is that like not? Yeah. Like, right. Can you not? Can you not get a movie made if it's like happening, unfolding like in a linear time frame or what? I think yeah. The, problem but the is... original one was in chronological order, right? No. Like I remember it starting with Philip of Macedon's. Uh, assassination, but that's like one of the last scenes in this movie is Philip yep. getting killed. Hmm. Yeah. The uh, so the other thing about that, I mean, it it jumps around so quickly and and in such yeah. like kind of uh, random sort of seeming order. And I guess at the end you sort of see the different threads he's trying to trace, uh -huh. you know. And so they all get their conclusions sort of sort of the time or something like that. But it just like. I, I don't know, like the, um, I, I actually forgot what I was going to say about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, oh, no, here it is. No, every, every single scene, though, whatever point in Alexander's life it is, whatever is happening in the scene, if it's a battle, if it's like him talking to his dad or whatever, they all have this same sort of completely unearned, like, sense of, like, gravitas like it's mm -hmm. every single moment right. is a momentous occasion and it robs like the especially uh, i think that the second part of the film in india a little bit a little bit different but certainly the first before the intermission part of the the film is just like there's no sort of narrative momentum or anything to it at all it's just like a dentist drill and mm -hmm. i don't understand like like okay why do i need to see seven years ago we were just looking at four years ago right yeah and now we're now we're 10 years later right i mean yeah there, there's like one part where it just keeps going back and forth nine years forward nine years back nine years forward nine years back yep. and it's just like like each new scene is it just keeps switching back and forth and it's like you couldn't just do all of the nine years ago together and then all of these together no <laughs> i think the what one you, simpleton <laughs> i will say especially for a movie about history which <laughs> definitionally moves chronologically. Right. Yeah. That is the normal way to experience it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think I think the one sort of factor that makes it even remotely possible to sort of quickly ascertain what point in this constantly shifting timeline you're in is the, the awesome wig work that they used for yeah. Alexander. Uh, it's just like from one awful haircut to the next and you're like okay now it's a long shitty wig oh no yeah. now he looks like uh like prince valiant all right so now it's like he must be younger <laughs> and then yeah. i have to say the kid who plays like not like littlest alexander but like yeah, yeah yeah you know when he's learning to wrestle when he's finding himself that alexander um it was kind of freaky like not that it was they did a good job casting whoever that kid was yeah because he looks sure. like a he young Colin Farrell with a bad blonde wig. And yeah, dude, absolutely. The smaller dude, wig. Absolutely. Like, they couldn't make it look like real hair, yeah. but they could make that smaller wig look exactly like the bigger wig. <laughs> well, like the younger version of the big right. wig. You know? Right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I yeah. guess so, uh, Evan, do you want to, since we're kind of jumping all over the place, do you think maybe it's a good idea to start like moving through the film and, and then we can kind of latch on to our specific, uh, gripes or maybe the things that we really yeah. like about it i don't want to yeah, yeah, sure. clearly uh, clearly clearly we're all staving that off as long as, as humanly possible yeah, yeah. Probably yeah just probably just buckle down and get to it yeah yeah well we're gonna stave it off uh one more time though because uh i do believe <laughs> our guests have uh they've got a little ad spot for us right yeah this is weird um a buddy of mine um I, I told him I happened to mention that I was I was coming on the show to discuss Alexander and he like lost his mind. Apparently, it's one of his favorite movies. And he thought that his, this would be a perfect uh, opportunity for him to promote his family business. OK, uh, so he sent me this ad spot. Uh, so Porus Jr., uh, Porus the Younger, this goes out to you. Uh, Is your nation state under siege by the largest and best trained army in human history? 
Do you need to repel hundreds of thousands of archers, cavalry, and infantry? Well, there's only one way to go. Porus and Sons War Elephants. That's right, <laughs> War Elephants. Porus and Sons can provide you with up to 30 highly trained, armored, and weaponized War Elephants for your upcoming battle. These animals have deep experience with close quarters war fighting and are trained to carry howdahs to accommodate your archers and other troops. Howdahs available at an additional cost. <laughs> Prices for a single war elephant begin at 1,000 karshapanas. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> Our animals aren't cheap, but how much is defending your kingdom worth to you? This is not the place to skimp. Other firms employ substandard and poorly trained pachyderms that will endanger your soldiers and could be the difference between glorious victory and humiliating defeat. So call, email, or send a messenger or carrier pigeon to Porus and Sons today. <laughs> Our sales staff can help you develop an elephant-centric response to whatever aggression you're experiencing. <laughs> Allow 16 to 20 weeks for delivery. Uh, oh, and also, Porus and Sons wishes you a happy Pride Month. Oh, oh. very nice. <laughs> very nice. Wow. Now, I wonder if the how does come in different trims, you know, like an, an EX, Ooh. an LX, a hybrid. <laughs> I'm sure I don't have like a rate sheet in front of me, but I'm sure there are plenty. Yeah, you got, you know, they I know that the cheapest elephants are like the smallest, youngest right, and, right. and most poorly trained. So they probably have like some, yeah, some crazy yeah. deluxe trim package on the howdahs as well. Yeah, cool. I mean, and there's and there's pros and cons to a small elephant. I mean, less likely to trash your house, but also less likely to, to scatter your enemies to the four winds. So, yeah, um, yep. you got to buy wisely. Invest. Yep. Absolutely. Wow, well, thank you so much. Uh, and that I will say, awesome. uh, just as someone who's been through it, skip the undercoat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get, no, the, you gotta get the undercoat I've in. Just, and I'm, you know, it's for a different podcast, but I've been, I've been through that particular ringer before, and it's like, boy, you think you're, you're getting a good deal on, on your pachyderm, but they, they, they make it up on the back end, you know. Yeah, yeah. With all the, the add-ons, yeah, absolutely. Literally yeah. the back end. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, that's great. And and dear listeners, I I, I really sincerely hope that you uh, that you throw these guys some business because the war yeah. elephant uh, industry has taken a big hit in this economy. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. The, the pandemic was really tough for um, the yeah. war elephant industry. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Won't won't someone think of the pachyderm handlers? Yeah. <laughs> yep. All I'd right. like to see a war elephant handler, I'll just say quickly, go John Henry yep. style up against like a Reaper drone. You know, who can <laughs> Fuck yes. Who can wreak the most, you know, sort of havoc against an advancing army. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that'd be Let's neat. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, really, I don't know I don't know how I would stop a Reaper drone, but I do know how I would stop a war elephant. You just cover a bunch of pigs and pitch and set them on fire and let them yeah. loose on the battlefield. That's how the Romans <laughs> yep. did it. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, maybe it's not the most. Yeah, uh, yeah in this day and age, you know, it's kind <laughs> not of not a cruelty to get away free solution. Setting your but pigs on fire. But, absolutely. If you've yeah. got a surplus of pigs, I'm just putting it out there. It's like, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Let's, yeah. uh, let's, get right, yeah, let's dive into this movie then. So, um, <laughs> so it begins with Alexander's death and then immediately switches to uh, 40 years later with Hopkins as Ptolemy and he's recounting the events of this, uh, expedition. And then it, uh, immediately switches time again. Mm. And goes to the battle <laughs> that is already like within like ten minutes. We've had three different like time changes. Just absolute whiplash trying to keep yeah. up. I know. I was like already my, my head was spinning. So it goes to the Battle of Galgamela, uh, with King Darius of Persia. Um, you know, the as I said before, Rory McCann is here, the hound, and he's just absolutely uh bantering with a bunch of other dorks and Alexander's army. <laughs> <laughs> I have him. I have written here. My second note is, the hound plays a man who puts wood on fire. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that that was just going to be a cameo. I wasn't prepared for him to be in the whole movie. Um, yeah, and then I was actually kind of bummed out that he was. I was like, oh, that would have been a sweet like little part to just have in the film. Yeah, man I mean, with my firewood. 
Yeah, dude, my favorite is at the end when he's, like, at least a foot taller than everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. In the, uh, in the, uh, the Diadoki, uh, class photo. We're at the Battle, battle of Gaugamela. You know, we've got some, uh, homoerotic tension going on with Alexander and Hephaestion already. Um, I'm gonna say not nearly enough in this movie, you know. I, I would have liked some more. <laughs> I no, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it is Pride Month, and I was thinking as we were watching this that like we're we're watching a film about like arguably the most famous like gay man in history. Yeah, and and all they ever cop to in this movie is that he was like maybe down to like fool around, and like that's yeah. cool. But like there was a deep, deep personal love between him and Hephaestion, which is like pretty well historically documented. So it's not yep. even like this is a matter of controversy. Like this is a kind of an established fact. And I just think yep. it's so funny that, you know, even I get, I mean, this was, I guess, gosh, like 15 years ago, but still like, it's funny how much they dance around it. I mean, it's not like it's pushed completely off to the side, but yeah. it's, it's certainly not uh, dealt with. I don't think in a, in, in a completely honest way. Uh, yeah. by the by the filmmakers so yeah I it, mean, it, sorry go ahead pat oh i was just gonna say you know it is and i think we were talking about this earlier today it's it's funny that like oliver stone like attributed the failure of this movie critically and commercially to the gay the gay themes and the gay content because it's like <laughs> yeah i mean it's there yeah but that was one thing i knew about this movie going into watch of this episode was that okay there is there's you know it's famously a, a movie with gay themes in it but it's mm -hmm. like, that's not the main thing of the movie. Right. You know, it's like, the thing is three and a half hours long, and it's just this incomprehensible, delirious mess. Mm, yeah. And the idea that somebody, like, walked out of this and was like, ah. Well, yeah. Damn, he was, he was I hitting can't that, believe they that made Hephaestian. the ancient Greeks gay. Are you yeah, kidding right? me? Yeah, <laughs> no, that, was, that was too much what for me. What person, what bigoted person was like, what? They're trying to make Alexander gay? And it's like, yeah. buddy, uh... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> there, there was an entire lawsuit. Did you guys read up read up about this? No, it was the this? lawsuit. The some some like Greek historical group uh, was up in arms and sued Oliver Stone personally and commercially because they made Alexander gay. It was pretty awesome. Oh, Wait, are man. you serious? <laughs> How dare you, sir? I yeah. think the weird the weirdest part of the the gay themes is that they they allude to Hephaestion and Alexander being lovers. And yep. they, they, they clearly, like, they play it like they are lovers. However, the only time you see him getting gay, the only time Alexander yep. ever gets gay is with uh, Bagoas, who's played right. by Anna Kendrick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, I'm being yeah, told the, uh... that that was, not, that was not Anna Kendrick? Why did it look so much like Anna Kendrick, then? <laughs> yeah, no. the, uh, his uh, eunuch page. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who, like, gets, you know, poor Bagoas, because Bagoas gets, like, no... It's like no love in this whole movie. All he is is this like like sort of he looks at you mysteriously and maybe does a dance. <laughs> has like two lines in the whole movie, and then at the end he's like, "You've given me the happiest days of my life." And it's like, "What did you do? What have you right. done? You've been used <laughs> and just like sucked him off. You've been yeah. fur <laughs> you've been furniture, Bagoas. Like, surely you have a hobby or something." <laughs> yeah, while getting dragged across the Hindu Kush mountains. I know. Shit, like. <laughs> Although I will say, Bagoas did survive. The death march through the through the desert, which yeah. good on him, mm -hmm. good on him. Anyway, I'm sorry we've yeah girl boss we've yeah. won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so then we also we've got some bull sacrifice going on, and um, I don't remember the actual word, Kim. Maybe you do, but the guy was doing like his little oh, organ auguries. Aug augury, yeah. Uh, a heresy, right? Uh, where well, they read the organs, I forget. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so you got some of that going on. And Alexander also has a Medusa head breastplate, which I just, like, immediately got <laughs> Versace by Bigo stuck in my head. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even yeah, think Medusa of that. Medusa head yeah. on me like I'm Luminati. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I mean, his mother was uh, associated with Medusa. And, I mean, they sort of make yeah. that reference, like, again, sort of at, at the, the last minute of this movie. But yeah. um, the Macedonians, truthfully, didn't like her because she was from Epirus. And was another, you know, of another ethnicity, basically. And uh, yeah. there's sort of an undercurrent to this movie that I think they get kind of right, which is, like, just the general, like, 
interculture racism that was like really yeah. rampant in ancient Greece. So like, you know, the southern Greeks, what we would think of as Greeks from like Athens and Sparta, really didn't like the Macedonians, really didn't like mm -hmm. people from Epirus, uh, people from Thessaly, people from Thrace. Um, and so there really is this undercurrent like that once the Macedonians sort of gained supremacy and took over all of Greece, which doesn't even really get talked about in this movie, um, yep. they were hated like vehemently by the, the, the civilized world. Um, and it's almost like Oliver Stone agrees with them in some of the ways that he portrays some of these characters as like sort of like uncouth barbarians and with the accents yeah. and everything. It's, it's, it's just funny to me. Um, he's like playing into these like, you know, 2,500 year old cultural stereotypes. It's like, what, what angle could you possibly be serving by doing that? I don't know. It just seemed funny. Yeah. It, it is nice to uh, to know that inter-Balkan race, uh, racism has been an issue through all of human yeah, history. Yeah, that's not new. That's not new. <laughs> it's like they all just hate the absolute shit out of each other. I know. Too yep. bad. <clears throat> yeah, so then uh, the battle finally gets underway. Uh, there's a really horrific-looking CGI arrow volley. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that I, I feel like that's probably one that really wouldn't have been that difficult to just film, like, regular, but... Nope, they went with the absolutely terrible CGI. And, Wait, you um, don't think it would have been difficult to get 10,000 guys to shoot arrows over your camera? It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would have been Not really difficult. difficult. Just, just expensive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they go with the, like, PlayStation 2 graphic-looking arrow oh, volume. And then, um, uh, so I actually thought the battle itself was kind of cool i mean it was sure. like gory as hell which was pretty sweet <laughs> just like dude's faces getting like ripped open and shit. <laughs> i did think so there are two two major uh, battle pieces right in the entire movie yeah. there there's Gal Gal galgamea Gal there's gilgamesh and yeah. then there's uh <laughs> the the one uh with porus and, and the elephants in the forest at the end and I kind of wondered what Oliver Stone was attempting here. Was he trying to do like a big, you know, Cecil B. DeMille, like Ben Hur style epic thing? Because he didn't really pull that off. No. Nor did he pull off the. He, he did try to. So we kept getting these super titles, right? Uh, yeah. uh, Macedonian center, Macedonian right flank. Yeah, like yeah. He yeah. tried to orient us to what was happening. But like, yeah. A, that's really difficult to do. And two, nobody fucking cares. Like this is not the this is not the place to try and right. teach us like what went down on the battlefield that day. Just like pick a pick a thing. Like I guess the the thing that broke uh, uh, Darius was the fact that he you know outflanked him, mm -hmm. and like don't try and don't try and convey the entire mechanics of the battle. Just fucking show us Alexander outflanking him, and you know pressing him and and routing him like yeah right i think this, in that, this is that not a me, fucking history class that's yeah, one yeah. of like my big complaints about this movie as a whole it feels like throughout oliver stone was trying to simultaneously make like a super informative historical piece and a piece of entertainment and in trying to satisfy both those needs was able to like mm -hmm. accomplish absolutely neither one and so mm -hmm. It's funny, like, if you read about the Battle of Gagamela, it's it's one of the most famous battles in history because of the trickery that Alexander employed, right? But there were so many better ways that he could have just really easily conveyed, like, hey, so what we're going to do is charge the cavalry like we're running away, and then we're going to zip around the back and pull a hard turn and come back and surprise him. And if they mm -hmm. had literally just said him, had him say that at the start, like, the plan is this, guys, in, like, a yeah. huddle... As a, as a moviegoer, that's a way better way to get the same idea across. And then if some kid is interested, like, wants to go and get a dumb bachelor's degree, he can learn about the left and the right flanks, right? But yeah, yeah, for sure. you're absolutely right. There's no reason to go into that level of, of descriptive detail because what you're actually doing is depriving us of one of the most pivotal action scenes in a movie mm -hmm. that is about military conquest and has, like, almost no fighting in it, which, again, yeah, is fine. Yeah, for sure. But, like... You gotta have something else to make up for it, and it's just not. Yeah, there. like, yeah, like I just want to see the chariot run through um, the Macedonian soldiers and just like hack their legs off. Like yeah. that's what I want to see. And so when it did that, sick. it was yeah, dude. Like that when it sick. did shit yeah. like that, that it was really really cool, and it was just like insanely gory. But uh, yeah, no, it was a very it was impossible to follow what was happening. Yeah, when well, it I, the I, I thought shots. Yeah. 
I thought the Chirons were very funny because it's just like, oh, cool. The center and the left and the right flanks all looked identical. Yeah, they yeah. were all doing the same thing, and I don't know, like I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah, like yeah. I could go, I could go in the Wikipedia article if I want and like read read about this. Yeah, right. it would like just like say, it almost like... was like he was deliberately like, I want to make this not really that fun to watch or yeah. something. Yeah. Like, yeah, we'll make it cartoonishly gory and then give you, like, too much information. That's how you know you're learning something, when uh, yeah. it's boring and it sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. And then there's a... Uh, uh, that brings me to, like, another thing that I was thinking of in that same battle, which is, like, um, the the resolution for the full battle, right? So he, he, he surprises uh, Darius the Great, right? Um, the great conqueror of, of Egypt and Arabia and, and, and the expander of the Persian Empire to its greatest extent, who is, by the way, his whole deal in this movie is to just do, like, weird, like, fish-eyed close-ups of his face. Yeah, where he's just, yeah. Like, like, looks what the like fuck a was that? <laughs> just to make him seem like, like, how do we make this guy, like, how do we make it clear that this is the bad guy without giving him, like, a second's dialogue or, like, any, any build-up, right? So they just give him mm-hmm. these, like, eerie, like, close-ups where he's just, like, you know, directing his armies. Um mm-hmm. They surprise him and, and they can't go after him because uh, what uh, Evan? What's um, what's the older general's name who is like Alexander's dad's right hand man? Yeah. Oh, um, this is that, I didn't uh, write it down. He's important. Oh, Parmenian. Parmenian. I was yeah, going to say yeah. Patroclus, but that's uh, that's Achilles. But so Parmenian, yep. the center crumbles with Parmenian, right? And yep. they they like we have to go back for Parmenian. And so at first that doesn't register with me because like I know this, I know who Parmenian is, and I know that this is how the battle goes. But then I'm remembering like we haven't even fucking met Parmenian. Like why would the yeah. audience give a shit that Parmenian's about to die? All they've shown us is like two seconds of an old guy being like we can't hold, and you're just like, okay, cool, who cares? So yeah. <laughs> then he's like we've got to go back for Parmenian, and I'm like why do we have to go back for Parmenian? Is he like yeah. the guy? <laughs> and they never like get around to explaining it. Like there's all these characters who are important. And the whole movie, they spend telling you, oh, this guy is important. But they never give you a reason to feel like why they're important. You just know, yeah. like, these are the pretty faces that surround Alexander. Like, these are his his guys. And mm-hmm. I'm supposed to care about them. And I'm also supposed to feel bad when they, like, betray him or almost betray him or when he has to kill one of them. But at no point do you ever get a sense of attachment to anybody but Hephaestion, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, yeah. Every single character in this this movie gets totally done dirty by like the scope that they're trying to achieve, and they do absolutely zero actual world building. So even like Alexander, who's the namesake of the movie, just feels like this like wooden caricature of a character through the entire mm-hmm. thing. Alexander is a complete cipher in this film. Like uh, you don't really see him do very much conquering. Like we said, there are two two battle scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, other than that, like the way the film handles, like, and there's a ton of exposition in the movie and the way they handle it is you get flash forwards to, you know, Ptolemy, uh, pointing at a tile map and explaining, explaining history. And then you go back in time to see Alexander and whoever, after whatever exciting thing he just described has already happened. You don't get to see it. You yeah. just see him kind of hanging out afterwards. Yeah, yeah, He's like, like oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like they don't they don't even touch like Egypt or like the whole like Gordian knot thing is like not even in the movie. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, none of his. It's none like of one his, of the like, most, most fam- famous moments or are... the yeah. most famous thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have a theory, uh, and I, I, I'm going to put this out there and see if any of you guys sort of came to the same conclusion. The yeah. way this movie is laid out, more than any other. Um, comparison that you can make to like another epic film or anything like that it feels way more like a poorly produced like a history channel biopic of alexander Mm -hmm. the great but with like a huge budget Mm -hmm. and by that i mean like even down to so you get like the the intro scene and then it cuts to like the opening credits where there's this like blue ripply like yeah, you know, uh, hated that. Show yes, yes. And just like, hated yeah, yeah. that. And I live in Jealous score kicks in, which is like, intro. <laughs> I know Vangelis has made some of the most like 
epic uh, film scores of all time. Like, I love the Blade Runner score, and I know Chariots of Fire is a big deal. But, like, from the second this starts, it sounds like, you know, something you got, like, made for you on Fiverr or something. And it's just triumphant synth horns. Every time anything happens, it's like, and it's it sucks, right? And well, I, gar I guarantee goddamn to you that Oliver Stone went to Vangelis. He's like, Dude, I loved Chariots of Fire. Can we just do Chariots of Fire as yeah. the score? Because it's literally, it's that same fucking theme over and over again. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Just played right. like phrased slightly differently. And I know I watched this uh, this interesting piece on on film scores, and I guess what ends up happening a lot is they just end up using the. Uh, so what they do is that when they're they're editing the film, the the composer will provide them with like filler music which they'll sure. use that's like fits the mood and they can sort of edit around that and then what will happen is they'll be composing at the same time and they'll they'll finish their piece based on the final edited film but what ends up happening is the directors just like the music that they've been editing around and they'll say hey can i just use this and so yeah. the composers end up being like i mean okay i can sell you that i guess but that's just like the shit that i gave you to to work with while i made your music um mm -hmm. And a lot, I've, uh, Hans Zimmer talks about that, and uh, what's his name? Simpsons guy. Uh, I'm doing him so dirty, but the composer for The Simpsons. <laughs> Danny is, Elfman. Boingo, boingo. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Danny Elfman talks about how like that's happened to him multiple times, and he's like, I end up spending all this time on something, and all they want is like the the clown music I send them to fill the space, and it <laughs> felt like that to me uh, yep. as we were listening to the score in this movie. But so it cuts from like these these crappy slideshow parts to just like an old English guy saying, and then Alexander went and fought the Battle of Galgamela. And then it cuts yeah. to like a poorly acted, like, you know, scene of that happening. And it just felt like the History Channel to me, man. It really yeah, it did. did. That, I, I agree 100%. <laughs> no, that blue screen that, that, opened, that the, yeah. opens the movie is like the most fucking cut rate shit ever, dude. It's, dude, so yeah, bad. it's, it's just like Greek letters and good. like Egyptian cartouches. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man. And I'm sorry, I know I'm going off right now, but speaking of Greek letters, how fucking bad yes. shit is it that all the Greek in this movie is English, Greek. just in like yeah. Greeky style font? Yes. So even down to watching Alexander like yes. write a letter, I paused it and I'm like, it yes, literally dude, just says we're going to go down. to the river and I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, yeah, I, I, I wrote Greek. it in my notes. There's one part where it's just like fake Greek lettering in, in English and it's just like, oh. as like Alexander's ruffling through papers, it's so funny. Super stupid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so anyway, um, you know, so Darius gets away from this battle, and um, Alexander... Oh, wait, uh, to, to Cam's point about Darius oh, being yeah. being the bad guy, uh, there is yeah. one other thing that he does uh, that cements his reputation as a bad guy, and that's that he fucking... Uh, uh, there's not a, a cool word, like, eviscerates, but he cuts he cuts some of his own troops off at the knees in his panicked retreat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His, his spiky, uh, his his spiky chariot like kills some of his own guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Which Alexander just, would never do. Right? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, he would never kill any of his own men. No. That's and that's <laughs> like my favorite thing about movies like this, like because he has his Braveheart moment where he talks about how it's the the freedom of Macedon versus the tyranny yeah. of of Persia, and it's like. The fuck freedom yes. are we talking about? <laughs> All of these guys just like to herd goats. Like every single guy on both sides doesn't even have a stake in this right now. You're both two psychopaths who are making all your yeah. cronies kill each other to see who can be the worst psychopath. Yeah, and, and, yeah. It's, and a, it's like, a great speech. It's a great speech yeah. he gives oh. where he's like, "Yeah, these guys, they're 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 a slave empire. Right. And these it's people, like the, they the like Greeks being slaves. They no keep slaves. slaves. Unlike us." You know, we're all free men. So anyway, you guys like being there. free men, thinking <laughs> yeah. for yourselves. Yeah. So go die so I can be a bigger king than I already am. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that must, must just be like, like a... Against these guys who fight for nothing. That yeah. must just be a thing we need to do to like what? make American audiences feel okay about what they're watching. Because like... Yeah. It's so anachronistic and so... It's like, you know, to watch Braveheart. And it's like basically just a movie about like you know, freedom, liberty in the American way. When in reality, yeah. like that, tr that story of William Wallace is like completely different and way less cool. Uh, it's way more about just like rich people scrabbling over scraps and like who gets to, you know, put the boot to the neck. You know what I mean? All of this yeah. is.
Um, I mean, dude, like, freaking Sparta, like, the majority of the population of Sparta was slaves. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, the fuck are you talking about? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Alexander nearly kills Darius, but he gets away. And um, Alexander goes back and saves uh, his buddy Parmenion, who we do not know who that is yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, and then we have yet another narrative jump, which it goes to Alexander's youth with this really fucking weird ass, like, attempted rape by Philip of Macedon mm. on Angelina Jolie. And this was just, like, a bizarre scene. And, like, Alexander's, like, in bed. And Philip, like, basically tries to force himself on Angelina Jolie. I don't know. What, what's her name in the movie? I didn't uh, write Olympias. It down. Olympias. Okay, Olympias yep, of so. Epirus. Olympias of Epirus. Um, I also really did like that there was a voiceover uh, that said Alexander was never defeated except by Hephaestion's thighs. So, hell right. yeah. <laughs> and they, but even that, so that's an example of what we're talking about where they're like kind of whitewashing over the, the gay stuff because the, yeah. the, the, the saying, they make it seem like it's about his wrestling moves and like that's not what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, yeah, no. that is not what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Hephaestion yeah, because... is not getting the credit he deserves for being the power bottom to end all power bottoms, okay? No, and actually, some, some scholars do translate it as Hephaestion's uh, bussy. Right. Uh, <laughs> defeated you know, It's another, and that's another, a lot of, and you can, I, just in terms of, in terms of scholarship, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, if that's, words. if that, if that jargon is a little too uh to you out there if it gets lost on your listeners i apologize but um <laughs> in a lot of classics departments that's what they're mm -hmm. saying absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely evan was it you who was telling me that like a lot of the time back then um when people were partaking in the sort of like institutionalized homosexuality that was really common uh with like greek older men and youths that mm -hmm. it was actually like thigh penetration that was yeah the popular... it's called the intracrural yeah you call it intracrural and that's uh you basically just like, I don't know, one guy sticks his dick in between the other guy's thighs. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were yeah. up to. So, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. I don't think wrestling, I mean, maybe wrestling moves seems, came into that it. That seems, but... uh, you know. Yeah. Just seems like guys, you know, hanging out. Doesn't seem like a. Just dudes being you know, bros. You know, man. I'm not sure that is a sex thing. I just think that's just, yeah, just guys I mean, being dudes. If you're just, yeah, if you dudes. let your friend, I mean. It's not gay if you just, like, let your friend that fuck fellas your isn't gay. Like, yeah. Well, dude, so, and, and that's the thing. So, like, you know, then it goes to, like, a scene where they're meeting with Aristotle, and he's, like, teaching them, uh, teaching, like, all the like, young boys. And then he goes over what's good gay sex and what's bad gay <laughs> sex. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we take a Plummer. moment to give my man Christopher Plummer his propers, though? Oh, he absolutely. is phenomenal. Always absolutely. and forever. Gem. Absolute gem. There are a couple of, of legitimately wasted performances in this movie, and that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. should be in the movie way more. Because, um, yeah. I mean, it's Aristotle, right? Like, Yeah. Kind know, of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. You've heard of him. <laughs> one of the biggest deals in history. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, I actually found there were a couple of scenes where Angelina Jolie like shows like a surprising degree of like emotional range. Now, granted, she they've fucking given her killed it, dude. She does. And they've given yeah. her nothing to work with. And you know what? As always, Val Kilmer. I, I've never hated Val Kilmer in a movie. He's a weirdo. And uh, yeah. his character in this, again, is like is strange. But that like fight scene, that like attack scene, the rape scene, that's some mm -hmm. intense stuff. And uh, I think they really sold that. Um, mm -hmm. Too bad it's just like bookended by like utter garbage nonsense. But yeah, yeah. there are some definite like acting moments in this film. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I got to give it up for uh, uh, recent Academy Award winner, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. uh, those, like, Phenomenal. tracking shots of him just walking around, like, you know, waxing historical and philo philosophical. Mm -hmm. uh, questionable, I think, as a narrative device and, you know, as a, sure. a you know, means for uh, exposition and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it's just, like, those are, like, the most some of the most compelling parts of the film are just, like, mm -hmm. he's just, like, you know, chewing on his scenery, talking to his little secretary, yeah. Uh, who looks like a cross between like Elrond and Nick Cave. <laughs> um, did, you guys, did you notice how he's making him walk around holding like a 40 pound yes. desk while he writes? It's like a yes. fucking desk. Yes. <laughs> and then he's like, ah, throw all that yeah. away. We're going to rewrite it. Um, <laughs> man, being a scribe. Yeah. And then there's a second guy whose job it is to follow him with the inkwell. Yeah. Whew. 
And also, all the shit he's saying is just it's just bullshit. Yeah. It's just nonsense. Because yeah, that's what history was at the time. It was just like, right, yeah, yeah, let me lie about a bunch of stuff I never yeah, saw. Yeah, I mean, he, he even says that, too. He was like, uh, he yeah, says something yeah. about them having to, like, embellish the facts to turn Alexander in, into who they wanted him to be. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, the freaking the Aristotle scene, when he's basically just like... You know, having sex with other dudes is, uh, it's not cool to do it if you're only having sex. But as long as you guys, like, talk about cool shit while you're doing it, it's actually pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, if knowledge yeah. And, and love and beauty passes yeah. between them. Yeah, and then somebody's like, what about sex with women? And like, he's just like, get the, get the fuck, fuck out, out of here, dude. Get Don't be cool. <laughs> We're trying to talk about Ew. serious stuff here, yeah. guys. Like, if you can't yeah, stay with it, get the fuck out, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. back to geography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and oh, then, um, yeah. Another scene of a guy pointing at tile maps. Right. For like yeah. twenty-five minutes. That uh, being said, Philip does it too at one point. I think in a cave, just points at tile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just oh like yeah, he's showing minutes. him like the mosaics of of the the mythology. Yeah. Those were absolute <laughs> garbage, by the way. Those looked like shit. Yeah. I don't know if those are historically <laughs> accurate, but give me a tile map any day. Absolutely. Those fucking cave drawings that Philip was rocking, like, those those were garbage. Yeah. Right. Mm. Why is this called the classical era when everything that they draw looks like a fucking first grader did it? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I just... Um, but yeah, no, this, the, of all the, of all the points in this movie though, that like, if I had a time machine, right, this stupid hypothetical and could like zip back and sit in on like a moment, that moment sitting with Aristotle, while he's just like talking about the world. That's yeah. one of those things. Like I would love to be able to sit in yes. on and, you know, be able to understand ancient Greek <laughs> and sit in yeah. on like Aristotle, just talking for three hours about like, yeah. And so the world's actually made up of tiny triangles. Um, and also if you want to fuck a guy, as long as you talk about those triangles, it's fine. Also, um, you can <laughs> sail around the world, the whole world, and, and you can end up in Egypt. Um, class dismissed. I would love to sit in on one of those classes. Yeah. That'd be tight. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, we move forward and it's, uh, some kind of like weird festival thing, uh, celebrating, was it Philip's invasion of Persia mm. that he's preparing for it, I believe. And this is when Alexander tames Bucephalus, um, the notoriously difficult, uh, black horse that he rides. <clears throat> There's not enough uh, Bucephalus in this movie, I will say, because he's like... Mm -hmm. You know, like in every Disney movie, the lead has like a like a charming animal companion who either talks or doesn't talk. You mm -hmm. know, like there's always like a sidekick. That's Bucephalus in this story. Like, except I mean, not charming. He's like uh, like a horrifyingly efficient like warhorse. But um, yeah. he's like a legendary figure in his own right. You know, he's like a mm -hmm. real world shadow fax. And he's yeah. just like in it at the start, and then he just is in it at the and end. Then they, and then his death scene, which holds no gravitas, because again we. No basically never see Bucephalus. Yeah. Alexander loved his, he loved like two things no. in this world. He loved Hephaestion and Bucephalus. And we yeah. don't even really get to know either. Yeah, one. I mean the the uh the the horse death scene at the end of Red Dead Redemption 2 brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. And this thing <laughs> just nothing. It's like who is this horse? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. Just so, like some guy, basically. Well, you can't compare the two, though, because one is like one of the finest pieces of art ever created, and the other is the movie Alexander. So um, <laughs> it's just not right. a fair comparison. Yep. Um, so then we get the cave scene that we were just talking about, where Philip warns Alexander to be, uh, be wary of women <laughs> while he's in the caves. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Philip gets drunk, and he talks about some myths. Uh, so then we move ahead to 331 BCE, and we're in Babylon. Uh, so it doesn't really show Alexander taking the city, but he does. Like, you don't get to see, like, any, like, cool battle. Um, and then Ptolemy says something about it being more difficult for Alexander to leave Babylon than to take Babylon. Uh, so this is after the Battle, battle of Galgamela. Um, and then, uh, then we get some eunuch action, which I really liked, <laughs> where that, like, fat weirdo eunuch, the bald one, oh, just, yeah. like, um, <laughs> yeah, no, this, this, uh, eunuch, he looks like, a uh, Varys from Game of Thrones. Yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, the fat bald one. And that's mm -hmm. when, uh, we are introduced to Bagoas, uh, Alexander's favorite eunuch, uh, who is played by, as Ian said, Anna Kendrick. <laughs> and then, um, I mean, I would argue like a more sen a more sensuous and voluptuous Anna Kendrick. Oh yeah, way thicker for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yep. And then, um, 
Uh, basically, Alexander tells Bogoas that he can go back home if he wants. And Bogoas is like, that's all right. My entire family's dead. I'll hang out here with you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, shit, you speak Greek. <laughs> so I thought this was interesting. The, the line that they ascribe or the interaction that they ascribe to Alexander and the, uh, sorry, the Babylonian queen, I guess, or the princess. Yeah. Um, actually happened uh, to Porus, I guess. From what I understand, so they just sort of borrowed that from. So he he finally defeats Porus, and you know annexes whatever the Hindu Kush region. And it was yeah. Porus who actually said, oh, he said, "How do you want to be treated?" And I said, "Treat me like a king." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and they ascribed that to. In, in they had that that happened in this scene because it wouldn't have worked, I guess, for the timeline to do it later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there are well, a couple instances <laughs> that I can think of, and there's at least one towards the end that I'll get to. But they did that a couple times where they. They captured, like, sort of the essence of a, of a legitimate interaction that occurred, but mm -hmm. they sort of snip and cut it. And, I mean, I guess that makes sense in the context of, like, trying to create some sort of, like, you know, emotional gravitas in a film. Um, it sucks that they weren't able to achieve it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. if you're going to chop things up, wish it worked out better. But, yeah, no, that yep. I don't remember that, but that sounds like totally the move with this movie. I feel like they did that yeah. a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really at this part that... Um, we're, like, introduced to the idea that, like, Alexander's going to treat all of the people that he conquers with, like, dignity and respect, and that he's really going to try right. to give them a part in, you know, the world that he's creating. Right. He's doing woke imperialism. Yeah, yeah He's not exactly, trying to turn yeah. everyone Greek. Like, you can still do your cute little thing over here. Just give me yeah. some shit. I just, I do still get your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Alexander, he sees you. He hears you. You're valid. <laughs> 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 and give me all your shit. <laughs> yeah oh my goodness yeah um so um and then uh, we have like angelina jolie who i'm just gonna call her that this entire movie mm -hmm. uh, she she warns alexander about um all of the followers around him being like treacherous and um and then uh Hephaestion and alexander drink and talk about needing and loving each other and also freeing all the people of the world which again i think is funny uh you know for uh, a society that was built on slaves. They keep trying to make them out into, like, free peoples. <laughs> yeah, it sounds actually kind of familiar. Like, the <laughs> idea of, like, we're going to go around the world and spread real freedom to all these people. And they're like, what? Who are you? Mm -hmm. like, I, okay. Oh, I'm yeah. free now? Cool. Felt yeah. free before. It sounds, now I kind of have to give familiar. you some of my shit. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, eventually we get to... Um, Alexander leaving Babylon and he's in northern Persia and they just found Darius like dead like by like a little creek or something like that mm -hmm. um he was killed by his own men which uh Alexander is very pissed about um which it actually kind of reminded me of uh have you guys ever watched the show Rome never watched it yeah Rome's Rome's cool I've seen Rome yeah it, it reminded me of um Caesar finding uh uh, what's his name? Um, Pompey. Pa um, yeah, Pompey the Great. Like after he's killed by the Egyptians, and right. then, like and he, he and he's just, pissed like, and he kills out. the Egyptians, right? Yeah, because he, he was, was like a consul of Rome, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So there's this awesome scene, like you know, Caesar is is fighting Pompey Magnus, the two guys for who's going to dominate Rome, and he's been fighting him across the planet, chasing him all over the Mediterranean, and he finally finds him, and the Egyptians have captured him, and they've killed him, and they plan to give him to Caesar as tribute. And when Caesar mm -hmm. shows up, they have him there, and he's dead. And they think that they're going to, like, get in Caesar's good graces. And he's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? This is one of the greatest Romans who ever lived, and you just stabbed him in the back and tied him up? I didn't want to do yeah. that. He's, like, my greatest adversary of all time. And I feel like they're yeah. trying to capture, like, a moment of that with Alexander and Darius where it's like, yeah. he didn't want him to get, like, stabbed to death by farmers in the mountains. Like, he wanted a glorious yeah. showdown to determine who was the greatest of all time. And this yeah. is not that, you know? Yep. And yeah, it gives you so some insight I'll, into, like, the psycho brain of a person who, like, is like Alexander. Like, it's it's all about the clout, man. He is all about yeah. the clout. Yeah, he wanted to he wanted to take down Darius, yeah. not Darius's like, commanders. This is an unworthy so, death. I wanted to parade him through the streets of Macedon yeah. in a cage and prod him with sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, Alexander then chases down the commanders 
And then uh, I, I did think it was funny in the movie. Uh, so it talks about how he founds his 10th city of Alexandria. And I do like uh, throughout the movie, they make like little jokes about how Alexander is just constantly like founding cities named Alexandria. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, kind of felt yeah, like Yeah, as, as far east as Virginia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, you, you forget sometimes, you know, again, if you if you don't have a, a, a academic background in this, the, the, the true scope of his uh, of his empire. Yeah, yeah, yep, that's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the way to Alexandria, Virginia. Um... So then, it, it, now we get the um the, the the entrance of Rosario Dawson as Roxana, uh, who Alexander marries, and she's just kind of like a um, kind of like a barbarian woman from like somewhere in like northern Persia or yeah, something. Yeah, Sogdia or Bactria. Yeah, I think it's Sogdia. Maybe it's Bactria. yeah. Well, in real know. life, it's it's one or the other. We don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, everybody absolutely hates this. <laughs> Uh, everybody is pissed at Alexander for marrying just some, like, random barbarian woman that has, like, no political, um, significance, really. And, uh, and then we get, um, the wedding party, which is pretty cool. It's a crazy-ass party. They got some bears and, uh, like, some, like, panthers or mountain lions just, like, in cages that they're fucking with. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, nothing spells a good time like just, like, some casual animal abuse. That seems yeah. to be the name of the game in the ancient world. Like, they're just, yeah. like... <laughs> oh, Getting this party drunken. sucks. Bring out that bear. Let's poke it. You know, yeah, right. horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible. Yeah. When when is the best time to do my pie in to Rosario Dawson? Is that now? Absolutely, yep. rock yep. and roll, brother. Jesus Christ, she looked she looked and was incredible in this movie. I but mean, absolutely, yeah. Oof. Oh, mamma mia! Uh, that's I know. A spicy like, meatball. Like, the yeah, it's like everybody time, keeps saying, like, what to... does he see in her? And I'm like, I know what he sees in her. Yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. He's she's gay as stunning. blazes, and he still thinks she's hot. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how could you not? She is a, clearly a gay icon. She's amazing. And, and like many of the actors in this movie, she is doing the most with the least. Like, sure. I, can't, I can't really point to a bad performance in this movie. They are, and I, and I think that's... That probably goes to Oliver Stone's credit for getting excellent performances out of his actors in this thing. And, and you know, maybe they thought they were in a sprawling epic that was going to, you know, uh, uh, herald a new age of, of Hollywood cinema. And they thought they were bringing back the Cecil B. DeMille ep- epics of old. Like, mm-hmm. everybody is fucking going for it in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody, a- including Rosario Dawson. And, uh, you know, to, 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 to almost no effect, to almost no end. But, like, right. yeah. Um, yeah. All of the performances, and I, I can't remember if it was before we started recording that we talked about Brian Blessed, uh, King of the Hawkmen from Flash Gordon as the wrestling trainer. <laughs> like my man can is like, you know, on a scale of one to ten, he's always on ninety, and I just fucking love him. And mm-hmm. uh, like, yeah. So Rosario Dawson, if if nothing else came out of this, uh, me watching this movie, having to watch this movie for you guys. Uh, th- there's this conversation and me getting to gaze at Rosario Dawson for a few Dude, minutes. Dude, yeah, so. when, there you go. when she was doing her little, uh, when she was doing the belly dancing scene, all I could think in my head was, God damn, dude, Cory Booker gets to tap that. That's so uh, it's a, it's well, well, does he, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, <laughs> needed. It, whether or not he takes advantage of it, I don't right. know. <laughs> Do you think she makes yeah. him, like, f- like hiss at her like a tiger, and like, <laughs> and then she puts a knife to his throat every time? He's like, he's like yeah. Rosario, babe. Can we can we do the Alexander thing again? She's like, oh my god! Like that was twenty years ago, Corey. And he's like, no, bitch! I told just just the last time. Just do the thing with the and I'll go and like yeah. (laughs) So hot. I I do think it's funny that um, yeah her kind of like main deal in the in the movie is her lack of you know significance. You know she's like I said you know no no political connections anything like that blah blah blah. And it's funny because, like, who, like, 20 years on is, like, a more bankable star in 2021 out of this film than Rosario Dawson? Mm-hmm. And, like, the, the rest of, like, the, uh, the, the cast list, you know, are kind of, like, fallen empires in their own right, <laughs> you know? Like, the, the fact that Colin Farrell starred in, like, a film with this budget and stuff is very funny. Yeah. You yeah. know, that, yeah, he's, he's like, a quirky indie movie guy. And it's like, oh, yeah, no. 
that's because he starred in Alexander. Yeah, yeah after, <laughs> after Alexander, he got relegated to Yorgos Lanthimos. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolute career killer for Which, everybody involved, and, and, and good for Which him. Which is too bad. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, he's good Yorgos in this movie. Rock, so. He's really good. <laughs> he's really like, good. Like all the rest of the actors, he's fucking going for it. And yep. maybe the performance of his career, I don't know. I, I loved him in Tigerland. There's probably other things I'm forgetting. In Bruges, yeah. you know. Oh, but in like, Bruges, yeah. What's what's a more uh, he really gets to like spread his wings and I can't think of another performance like this in his career. It was phenomenal. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And again, for what? For nothing. For nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's too bad. I mean, he he really sells like the torment of some of these scenes where he's like, you know, coming up on um, the great clash between like his monster ego and his entire life has been spent fulfilling all the expectations of him and surpassing them, right? Like, here's a guy who's, like, the ultimate, like, high school quarterback. Like, everyone said he was going to be the greatest. He goes pro. He is the greatest. All he can do is win until he stops winning. And then he starts drinking. And then everyone around him is like, what the fuck, dude? Used to be so great. And he's like, used to be? And, like, you really feel that, right? Like, it's it's a tragic (laughs) turn. And the movie around it just blows so hard. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like, man, because he, he does convincingly portray this, like, kind of complex, brooding guy who didn't realize he was mortal until it was too late. Mm-hmm. Holy yeah, shit, I mean, you guys. You guys, hang on just a second. I just realized it. Alexander is Michael Jordan. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And his, yeah. his dad was killed because of, like, gambling debts or, like, yep. crossing the wrong guys. And, yeah. like, yeah, he's now mm-hmm. just... Uh, yeah, living out his retirement in in Las Vegas. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, owning got... uh, steak houses, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. being being curt towards cocktail waitresses. <laughs> I would wear Alexander Brand uh, Alexander Brand sandals. I would wear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought he was particularly good in the um, the scene where like Philip dies, you know, <clears throat> and like where he like runs up to him and he's like. Just like uh, Philip's bleeding all over him, and then uh, was it Hephaestion like ro- uh, raises his hands up, like he killed it there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So uh, back to the uh, the wedding though. Um, there's just like a bunch of dudes wrestling while Rosario Pelli dances, which I thought was wicked funny. Mm. <laughs> like just in general, it seemed like a pretty pretty cool party. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is also where we get Rosario's accent at its like best. Like mm-hmm. I think like as the movie went on. She tamed it down, I guess, to try to seem like she's learning how to speak. But, like, the f- whatever she was going for in this, like, the wedding scene was wild. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as we said, we get that, that weird sex scene where, like, Alexander's, like, hissing at Rosario and stuff. And then, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, but um, right at the end, it goes to the shadow. And you can see, like, Alexander, like, finish. And you can just <laughs> see it as, like, the silhouette of his shadow. Oh, my it's God. It's wicked funny. What? No. <laughs> Yeah. I did. Uh, yeah. I did get my 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 new favorite um, like post sex line from this movie though. Ever since yeah. I uh, I'm, from now on, um, every night once my partner falls asleep, I'm gonna lean over her and whisper, hmm, "If only you were but a pale reflection of my mother's heart." <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. <Yeah. laughs> uh, if only. Uh, but I dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then we get uh, we get another time change. It goes back ten years, back to Philip's reign, and um, this is when uh, Philip he has a new wife and she's pregnant, and um, Angelina Jolie is just like trying to convince Alexander that he's being pushed out. You know, it's uh, it's kind of where that that whole narrative uh, starts out, mm. and she like tries to convince him to kill Philip, but he does not want to at this point, and he you know he still kind of like idolizes his father. Uh, and then it skips ahead 10 years. You know, that was all that we had to see back then. And um, it shows Alexander nearly being poisoned, but the uh, the cupbearer confesses. You know, he's, like, acting, like, all weird and, like, backing away and just, like, shaking and shit. And Alexander realizes that the cup that he was just given is poisoned. Uh, and this is when I noticed the, the fake Greek writing on the documents that Alexander is yeah. looking over. Yeah. It says, like, tax system or something like yeah. that. <laughs> Yep. Um, and uh, and then we we get some more Parmenian action uh, where he's implicated in the uh, the plot to kill Caesar, right. and he's killed because his son Perdiccas uh, is implicated, 
and yeah. they get Perdiccas, and then they're like, well, there's no way Parmenion didn't know about this, so he sends uh, Cleander and the guy with one eye. I forget who that's supposed to be. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And they, like, they just knife him, and it's like, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of sad. Well, they do, yeah. they kind of, they, 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 don't they read to him the, uh, the sentence first and then immediately kill him? Dude busts oh, out yeah. a scroll. He definitely busts oh, out yeah, a scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they definitely sentence him, and so he like knows he knows why or something. Yeah. Again, I, I was falling asleep. I, there's parts of this that I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I fully fell asleep twice during my watching of Alexander. <laughs> Only twice. That's probably a record yeah. of some kind. Yeah. 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 I was definitely I was eating some uh, eating some Portuguese food, a little chicken in Mozambique. So some of these uh, I'm just kind of skipping over. <laughs> Are there like big orange splotches on your notes? <laughs> no, there's no there's no orange splotches on my notes. <laughs> yep. Uh and then this is when we get uh uh Alexander first lays with uh the Anna Kendrick eunuch. So yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know why lays with stuff. makes it sound worse than it is. <laughs> it's way yeah. dirtier, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if you just said uh, he fucks his friend Bagoas, it's like okay, cool. But yeah. you know, he lays with <laughs> Well, that's yeah, all we yeah. see. We only see the laying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know? That's true. There's no clapping <laughs> yeah. cheeks in this whole movie. No. Which is. Like, I mean, I just. I it's rated R. Come like, on. Yeah, I can't imagine any of this is like fun for the eunuch Bagoas. Um, you know, and uh, also I did. Uh, I when um, while while watching this movie, I did uh, take a brief aside to look at uh, or to read up on all the different ways that people were made eunuchs in the ancient world. And it was uh, pretty horrifying stuff. I can only imagine. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yep. So then we skip back nine years. Are you not gonna, another you're time not gonna tell us any of them? Oh, you get. Oh, yeah. You want it? Well, some of them just had the balls cut off. But I had always wondered what. Well, like what? That's happened. pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I had always wondered like what happened. Like, not good. If they fully emasculated them, and like apparently you would just like chop it off, <laughs> and then you would have to like plug up whatever is remaining of the urethra and Fuck, you, the man. person would be made to like walk for a few hours like right after the surgery and then they wouldn't be able to piss for like three days <laughs> why did and, they make um, them walk i i guess just to get blood flowing again because you had to like kind of like you had to like wrap up their legs and their like torso like really really tight so it didn't bleed too much and so yeah, you would make them like walk around for like three hours, and then they couldn't go to the bathroom for three days, nor could they drink anything for three days. And then you would pull this. They, I use the term spigot. They would pull the <laughs> spigot out, and if you didn't immediately start pissing, it was just assumed that everything got blocked up, and you would just be left to die. Yo, <laughs> like, dude, yo. all of that, and then it's like, oh, oh well, man. sorry, man. Operation yeah. was not a success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it uh, appears as though you are unable to oh. piss whatsoever because everything got blocked up. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Get the fuck out of my court. I'm really glad I had you tell us. Yeah. Thanks, All man. Right. Dude, just the fact yeah, that I was... the term spigot. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, I was a little ambivalent on, you know, becoming a eunuch before this conversation, but it's got to be a pass <laughs> for me at this point. Yeah. You know, just Although, let me just let, just pretty much keep it all. You know, yeah. come come what may. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh. versus the other stuff. At least I'm not going to fill up like a water balloon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, you know? Walking for three hours. It's funny because like you don't think getting your dick and balls chopped off is is there's anything worse than that. But then you're yeah. like, yeah, then they would make you walk around right after. Yeah. Well, that's where I. Think, God damn it! That's where I draw the line. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. you can cut my what dick and balls off, about? but fuck you, I'm not. I'm sitting rest. still. Yeah. yeah, you just. Well, I have to get up and, and walk around. <laughs> fuck yeah. that. <sighs> but yeah, so it's called castration if it's just the balls. Dick and balls is emasculation, and apparently there are some instances of it just being the dick. So they take the balls, <laughs> get rid of the dick. <laughs> that's, oh, that's that's the I honestly go for that just for how funny. I it was gonna be. say that's <laughs> kind of like that's a little bit swag, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because it makes him look, it makes your, your balls look so yeah. much bigger I'm by comparison. Balls, How do you pee? Oh, no, just from that hole, like, above the balls. No, that's, yeah, yeah. it's awesome, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Like, that's just, that, that's psychotic, man. Cool. Um, 
kind of swag. Yeah, yeah so, that would um, be pretty rad. I would I would go for that one of the three if I had to do yeah, one. Yeah, if I had to choose one, take the dick, but I want the balls <laughs> to stay right where they are. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so yeah, all this to say that eunuchs were only castrated. They still had their dicks. So gotcha. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we skip back nine years, and it's um, uh, a celebration after Philip's wedding to his new wife, and uh, then there's like a like horrifying scene of like Philip and some of his buds like drunkenly sodomizing some dude. Oh yeah, that like, that was wicked rough. It dude, was only like, for like just like seconds. Like, like, they're just getting drunk at his wedding, and he's like, all right, yo, yo, bring that guy out. We're going to shove some shit up his ass. Yeah. <laughs> and then they show, like, a bunch of other dudes just, like, dragging him away, and like, what did... Mm-hmm. Ugh. Like, what the it fuck It was, like, a really happening? visceral moment in, in a movie that's, like, pretty cartoonish a lot of the time. Like, yeah. this movie gives, like, a pretty, like... Uh, it's funny, like, for such a big movie with such, like, intense, like, moments of, of violence, it's, like, kind of PG for a lot of it. And, um... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, like, a real jarring moment. Yeah, with, like, this, like, bloodlust look on uh, Val Kilmer's face, yeah. too, while he's doing it. He's just, like, it doesn't even show what he puts up there, but he puts it way the fuck up there. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Nothing should be get, it, you know. Yeah. It's pretty clear that guy wasn't looking for anything up there. Yeah, yeah, he, <sighs> yeah, he, um, maybe thighs at most, a little intracrural, but, you know. Yeah, no, well, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. Just hel- that's just helping your buddies have a good time. Yeah, yeah, as long as you talk about cool things, it's <laughs> good gay. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, so then at this wedding, uh, Alexander gets insulted by some dude. Um, and then a brawl breaks out where uh, Philip, like, disowns Alexander. And, like, he, like, falls off of his, like, throne. And I forget what Alexander says. He gets a pretty good, uh, pretty good own on him. He's basically like, this guy wants to, like, go to Persia and conquer there, but he can't even make it from, like, one couch to the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, legitimately um, good line, I thought. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then it skips back ahead <laughs> to uh, <laughs> after after the uh, Alexander's marriage to Rokshana. Um, they start marching over the Hindu Kush mountains, and um, they talk about how Alexander doesn't have any sons yet, and uh, he's talking to Ptolemy about the future and um, how to get over the mountains. And then that's just basically the end of that scene, and we hit the intermission. Yeah, which I I did think it was funny that it just it says intermission on the screen, and it's just like thirty seconds of like music and like moving pictures. Very like strange. This isn't playing in theaters. Why is this even yeah. here? <laughs> <laughs> on the Blu-ray, it's like okay, you can get up and go to the bathroom now. And it's like, oh yeah. man, I like I bought all these adult diapers for nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm using. <laughs> and it's like. And it's not even long enough for a bathroom break. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have yeah. 30 seconds in which to hit pause. And yeah, then right, yeah, you have 30 seconds that. to find the controller and hit pause. <laughs> um, because by now yeah. your brain has smoothed out so much you've forgotten yeah. reality. You have to readjust to your surroundings. And, oh, jeez, yeah, oh, this is just a movie? It's like I was there. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it your takes brain a while, is just like... It takes a while to get the spigot out, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so then uh, we pick back up in part two, and uh, we're now in India, and it's the year 327 BCE, and this was my absolute favorite part. Uh, They talk about how um, Alexander's men were fighting uh, against um, small hairy dudes in the trees, but then they just figure it out. It's just fucking monkeys. (laughs) That ruled so hard. Yeah, that ruled. They're like little little guys, too. They're not even, like, they weren't, like... Higher primates, they were like, like orangutans or something. Yeah, cool. not capuchins, but something equally yeah. goofy. Yeah, 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 some kind of like goofy monkey. And am I remembering wrong, or does like one of the guys then walk out holding one by the hand, or does he? Oh, no, I was about to say, I, I, I was about to say, dude, they're like straight up marching some of the monkeys like they're prisoners. Yeah, like, like they got them in like shackles. <laughs> you thought walking. these were guys? <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, dude, there's one that he's just got this, like, dead look on his face, and he's all shackled up, but he's walking like a prisoner. It's so funny. <laughs> They're actually highly evolved. They consider, you know, all primates to be equivalent to human beings. 
You yeah. guys wouldn't understand. You're not right. <laughs> That is a hot yeah, that, that, take. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that, that was my absolute favorite part of the movie. They're just, like, shooting arrows, and these monkeys are like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, no, so throwing then, uh, feces is how we show affection. Jeez, whoa. Yeah. yeah <laughs> what I'm is trying going to keep on? you some of my feces. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the army is now starting to become disillusioned. And then uh, there's some kind of, like, drunken party where people are, like, openly questioning Alexander, which can't have that Mm -mm. yeah clean yeah not 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 great for your prospects um and this is when uh alexander kills one of his oldest supporters in like a drunken rage and i i did not even like i had to go back like this guy's in the movie a bunch it's cleander Uh, yeah uh it was cletus the black i believe oh it's clytus clytus Clytus, yeah yeah. which one's cleander i'm not sure who cares i thought sometimes they were saying names but yeah (laughs) but you know, this is supposed to be, like, this, like, huge moment, except, like, it's after this scene that they go back and show the his friendship beginning with Cletus, or Cletus. <laughs> so it's just, like, they show him kill him, and it's like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, I mean, I saw that guy for, for, I've been seeing him, like, in a few scenes. But then they go back uh, nine years earlier, and it's back to Philip's reign, and it's after he just subjugated Greece, and Alexander is back in Philip's good graces, and that's when you see the friendship start with uh, with Cletus the Black and Alexander. So uh, I, I, I'm not really sure why they put it in that order, but um, and then it's also at this part that the man that Philip sodomized at his uh, at his wedding, you know, the the main event of his wedding, uh, the guy uh, stabs Philip, and Philip dies in Alexander's arms. And so yeah, I thought this scene was really really effective acting by Colin Farrell. Yeah, it was a little. Uh, it was good acting by Colin Farrell, and 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 you know, sort of a, a, a game effort mm-hmm. uh, uh, by by Philip as well. But like, it was just so hokey. They're like trying mm-hmm. to humanize Philip at you know at the very last, and right Val the like, hour. yeah, he's like, oh, make sure the wine flows freely. I want everybody to like me, and I was like, come yeah. on. It's if you <laughs> didn't, if you weren't already aware that Philip was about to get assassinated, you sure know it now because you've telegraphed it. You're, you're you're shot from a mile away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Yeah. And and I mean another thing that they definitely kind of put kid gloves on for. Maybe this is just because like people wouldn't identify with Alexander as much if they thought he killed his own dad, but like he probably did. And mm-hmm. um. You know what I mean? Like, it, Absolutely. It, maybe he doesn't seem like such a golden boy, like hero, like mm-hmm. tragic protagonist. If you know that, like, he totally probably murked his own dad. Yeah. I mean, his dad was an asshole who like hey, raped who, his mom. Whom but... amongst us has not wanted to <laughs> kill our own dad and marry our mom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like day one shit, man. That's it's yeah. A, it's in kind all of us. the uh, kind of the opposite of what they do in the film Gladiator, which is. Uh, Commodus kills uh, Marcus Aurelius, mm-hmm. which I don't think happened. I don't think that's like a point of historical consensus. No, that no. Commodus killed his father. No. I think he got like, uh, you know, toe fever or whatever mm-hmm. from <laughs> yeah. an infected toenail or something. Yeah, and yeah. Died thing in that got Bob Marley. Or whatever. Yeah. Like... yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> 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 Two of Earth's greatest <laughs> philosophers. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So, um, um, yeah. So, in this scene, Alexander is a uh, proclaimed king, and Angelina Jolie is like seen in the crowd, just like staring daggers at like <laughs> Philip and Alexander. <laughs> and, uh, you know, clearly, um, clearly it's supposed to be implied that she paid the, um, our poor sodomized, uh, our poor sodomized fella to kill him. Uh, and that also says that Alexander would never see his mother again. Um, you know, she basically, like, you know, at least in the movie, killed Philip for Alexander, and then it's just like, she fucks off. Yeah, and he's just, like, <laughs> mad at her. He's like, I really liked him. And she's like, what? No, you didn't. Yeah. No one did. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, that's my dad, because I'm the hero, and I love, and heroes love their dads. Yeah. And then he, like, shuns his mom. And... Yeah. Ugh, stupid. Yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, and that also talks about how Philip's new wife and, uh, killed, kid were killed. So... <sighs> And then, uh, oh yeah, wouldn't you know it, we jump back ahead 
<laughs> nine years again. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, sorry, not to backtrack. Um, yeah. This is where another departure from history, right? Because mm-hmm. in real life, uh, Alexander's half brother Philip, Philip the uh, Fourth, mm-hmm. lived, and he was. They didn't have like uh, delicate ways of describing it back then, but he was in some way like profoundly mentally handicapped. Um, mm-hmm. which is a large part of why Alexander actually was brought back into Philip's good graces. As he got older, they realized, like, oh, man, this other son is, like, I mean, this is going to sound harsh, but, like, not a viable option for succeeding to the mm-hmm. throne. And so it's incentive for Philip to say, you know what, maybe Alexander's not so bad after all, and he sort of brings him back. And Alexander mm-hmm. probably took that opportunity to just kill his dad. And his younger brother wasn't a threat for, you know, whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so he kept him around. And that comes back later, and I can bring that back at the end. But Because um, they okay. kind of cut out some drama at the end of the movie with yeah. uh, Alexander's mother and his brother and the succession and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so we jump back ahead to India. And uh, basically Alexander gives a speech to his men about continuing to the sea. And once they get to the sea, they'll just, like, build some boats <laughs> and then, then head home. Yeah. Which, I mean, honestly, after looking at the journey to get there, it's, <laughs> like, kind of one of those situations where they got so far that might just be the better option rather than, like, going back through, like, the Hindu Kush mountains. Yeah, you if they had I mean? just turned south, they, like, could have done that, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind pretty of. much, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, so I don't think that was such a bad plan on his part. However, his soldiers definitely don't like it. And um, and then we get the hound, which is this scene where he's like at least a foot taller than literally everybody around him. And like you know, Rory McCann's like six foot six, so unless they've just got like all manlets here, <laughs> I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're uh, they're doing they're, some sort they're of actors, like... man. They're all like five six to five eight. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so he so he starts talking and he tries talking sense into Alexander about leaving. Um, and not, you know, fighting any more monkeys in the woods. And um, Alexander then promises everybody, like, pensions and riches uh, if they keep following him, but says if they stop, Alexander will keep going with all of his, like, new Asian followers. And this is not very popular. Um, Basically, like, a nascent mutiny begins, and uh, Alexander has to, like, squash that and just, like, brutally executes, like, everybody that was involved. Um, Aristotle, which I noted that he called himself a materialist, so, uh, you know, confirmed, confirmed Marxist Aristotle. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) He, uh, uh, he sends some advice to Alexander, telling him basically, like, not to lose himself out east, which, um, the advice would not be followed. (laughs) And, uh, (laughs) because he's... Alexander would go on to lose himself out east. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Um, excuse me. Uh, so the army travels south, and uh, they wind up in a battle with King Porus, uh, which is the Battle of the Hedaspes. And, um, yeah, so we get our second, our and only the second uh, major battle in the movie. <laughs> and this one is just basically, like, just in the woods with a bunch of elephants going absolutely fucking ape shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a guy guess. gets his head stepped on by an elephant. Dude, which yeah, is pops it like a fucking one of the only scenes in the movie that I rewound and watched a couple times. Not for the <laughs> not for the head smash itself, but for like the preceding half a second where they show yeah. like one guy go like ah, and then that guy go like ah, and then the elephant like steps on him. Oh, it's so good. They executed that so perfectly because if yeah, an dude. elephant was gonna step on me, that's pretty much what I would say. Yeah, he just like pops him <laughs> like a grape, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot that goes on in this battle scene. Mm. Um, it is about a hundred times more gore than I expected yeah. out of this yeah. movie going in. Yeah, I don't know if they were just like adjacent to the lot where like Saw Two was filming or something. Yeah, <laughs> but it it was yeah the the guy getting his head stepped on was crazy. Yeah. Um, elephants getting their trunks cut off oh man yep. Ugh. I, didn't um, like that. I did not like that crazy <laughs> and then doesn't an elephant get like its stomach cut open too and there's yeah. like big and yeah you just see like a bunch of like entrails come falling yeah. out it's like you won't even show two guys kiss but like <laughs> yeah Ugh. yeah i mean honestly i'm i'm gonna be honest you know uh 
the, the, the gore in these two battles were like my favorite part in the movies, like by far. It was so Fair funny. enough, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you Absolutely. are the guy who looked up the spigots for an hour, so Yeah, yeah, the, the piss spigot. <laughs> um one of my favorite things happens in this fight though. Um and I I think that if there is a fifth cut of Alexander, it needs to be the pink cut. Because... Oh my god. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> the pink Happy filter. Pride, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I want the four and a half hour pink cut of Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> I would watch it. Dude, it is oh my god. The strange oh. I think I think you can make a strong case that it's the strangest uh artistic decision in the entire movie. Um and it's a question. movie filled with some weird ones, but uh yeah. yeah, like halfway through this battle, and I guess it's like once Alexander gets wounded, everything goes pink, like a shade of magenta. And yeah. uh it's classic pink washing. Yeah, I've <laughs> yeah. never seen it before. Uh, I've yeah. never seen it since. I don't. I don't get it. Um, I don't know if he was going for like a Wizard of Oz type vibe, where like the chromatic shift is like the ooh and ah moment, but it's like, no, nah, yeah. man, it didn't uh, that. <laughs> Oliver Stone's just a—he's a strange cat, man. Have you like ever seen his um, Jeopardy appearance where he was no. on like a shit ton of ecstasy? <laughs> <laughs> like he admitted to it and he's so fucking weird <laughs> cuz he's just like rolling like out of his mind on that ecstasy rocks. and he's just like walking around and like hugging the other contestants and stuff holy shit uh, i mean uh, he seems... actually he wins the episode too he wins and he said he attributed <laughs> him winning to how quick he was on the button because of the ecstasy that he was on Incredible. wow good for yeah. oliver stone yeah I don't know. It was yeah. at this point where I said out loud, and this was only like an hour and a half ago because I was finishing this movie tonight. Um, yeah. I like paused it and I was like alone in my room and I was like, this fucking guy made Platoon. Like, yeah. it sucks because Platoon, like, how do you, oh man. Yeah, I just I don't mean, get he, it. <laughs> you know, he, he also did the JFK movie, which, which, which fucking uh, I like. Yeah, and you know, honestly, I think we should probably do a uh, movie episode on that one yeah, sometime yeah. in the future. But like, he also, he does like weird things in that one too, like the weird fucking like debauched like gay sex scene oh, between man. like so Joe reprehensible. Pesci and Tommy Lee Jones, where they're just like painting each other up with like gold. <laughs> it's yeah. like so fucking weird. Mm. Oh. I've never seen it, so if we do that, I'll just wait and watch it for the first time. Oh, Kim, yeah, you oh. got you got to see it. So yeah, it's an awesome movie. One of the weirder things is, is that he goes, yeah. So he makes what he makes Born on the Fourth of July. He makes Platoon two profoundly anti-war, uh, anti-American films, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, some other shit like Natural Born Killers and JFK. Mm-hmm. But then the next movie he would go on to make after Alexander is the fucking 9-11 movie. Wow. Which is just yeah. absolute apologia yeah. for all of the shit that he, you know, was railing against in the early, earlier part of his career. Yeah. He just got like, it's a classic boomer brain poisoning. It's yeah. so strange. Yeah. Such a weird trajectory. He got yeah, pilled, cause, man. Because JFK too, this, you know, JFK came out in like 92. Yeah. And he got a lot of flack for like the narrative in that movie being the CIA killed JFK. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I and mean? And he, like, did, he yeah. did for, you know, to be fair, he played very fast and loose with the facts. Yeah, um, yeah, and he made it also some weird like gay sex conspiracy yeah. to kill JFK with the CIA, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I I would like to see him, you know, sort of down the road uh, in a sort of return to form, uh, make like the definitive nine eleven conspiracy theory movie. I think that'd be <laughs> hell. Cool. Yes, I yeah. think you know, yeah, yeah, a three and a half hour movie about uh, how. Uh, a uh, Bush family adjacent gay sex cult did 9 11. <laughs> I would crowdfund the you know. shit out of that. Hell yeah, <laughs> I think with, uh, yeah. It's like, no, W, when I said I want you to make my tower explode, that's not what I meant. <laughs> and the whole thing is just like a slapstick <laughs> comedy. <Fuck laughs> Maybe you could do it like Death of Stalin style. Yeah. Where it's yes. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
But, uh, yeah, so back to the Hadaspes battle. Um, this one, it, it was, like, impossible for me to really follow what was going on in this battle, too. Didn't like, matter. Alexander was definitely, like, losing until he leads a cavalry charge, but then he gets injured and Bucephalus dies. Um, and uh, Hephaestion is also wounded. Uh, somehow they end up winning, but it's kind of, like, all just a jumbled mess. I think pa I think Pat had something here, didn't you? It didn't you, Pat? Yeah. About Hephaestion's mortal What's wounding. That? Hephaestion's uh, uh, yeah, wounding. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he um uh, he uh, he he is he gets stabbed in the dick, and we've talked, <laughs> yes. I guess, a bit about <laughs> different emasculations and castrations and stuff already in this episode. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. Is that a deliberate kind of parallel with the elephants getting their trunks cut off? I'm not totally sure. Yeah, did, did um, he get... But it's did, Oliver did, Stone, so probably deliberate. Yeah, did um, Hephaestion get, like, jealous about um about the eunuch? So he just, like, gets stabbed in the dick. He's like, do you love me now, yeah. Alexander? I'll, I'll, I'll show you. you now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they just, like, shoehorn in, like, in this one scene, like... Alexander goes down, and then Bucephalus goes down. And again, I contend there's not enough Bucephalus in this movie. One of the yeah. most famous horses of all time, okay? And you mean to tell me that fucking uh, uh, Seabiscuit gets a movie and Bucephalus doesn't, you know? Bullshit. It's underrepresentation. Yeah. Um, but also then, yeah, Hephaestion goes down, who's like mm -hmm. the only thing even approaching like a, a truly compassionate, sort of like emotionally involved character in this movie, which isn't to say that he succeeds at it, but they do more to develop his relationship to the lead than anyone else. Yeah, and but it's they, sort of relegated they also barely to give him any lines, too, yeah, though. You know what I mean? Like, usually Hephaestion's parts are just looking forlornly at Alexander. Yeah, with like pretty <laughs> eyeliner on. Yeah. You know, they don't they don't talk about how like they sort of relegate him like all of Alexander's love interests to like almost like furniture or object status in relation mm -hmm. to Alexander in this, which isn't fair, you know, because Hephaestion was like a, an excellent military commander in his own right and like was actually there because he earned his place. And it like just so happened that he and Alexander through like mutual genius, like developed this this relationship to one another. Um, but yeah, they don't give him any credit as like a, a, a true mover and a shaker. You know, he was like a big part mm -hmm. of how all these campaigns were won. Not that we see any of them in the movie either. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all just like just... party to party. Like he just like it, they almost make it seem like he just waltzes into like these foreign lands, and they're like, "We'll yeah. throw you a feast. You're our king now." And he's like, "Awesome!" And then he gets yeah. to India, and he's like, "Wait, what? I gotta fight these guys?" And then they just like stomp <laughs> his dick. And then it doesn't even feel like they win. It's like both sides just kind of give up. And there's this really yeah, weird scene saying. where the elephants are walking backwards, and everyone's <laughs> just kind of like, "Okay, like." Fight's over now. It was very <laughs> strange how they how they resolved that that battle. It's like they had it just long enough for like three important characters to like go down, and then yeah. they're like, okay, like yeah, but accomplished. yeah, there's no there's no like definitive moment like there is in the first one. Like the first one, right. like Darius like flees, and Alexander like you, you can see that he decisively wins that battle. This one, he's just getting fucked up in the woods, but he ends up winning. It's yeah. like, well, and I think uh, it, part of that is the pink filter on everything. Yeah. You really get the idea that Alexander has been mortally wounded. He's got a fucking spear in his chest. Yeah. Everything's yeah. red. So you're at that point, the viewer, if, if she or he doesn't know any better, you're convinced that he's going to die and he's right. going to lose. But then like the, the scene that, that comes next is like him emerging from his tent, wearing a weird like shift that you, a woman would wear at the beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like a gauzy number. He walks out and everyone's like, hey, Alexander's alive. So like everybody was surprised apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And then he has to ride some shitty other brown horse through the crowd. And that <laughs> horse gets more screen time. Right. Ugh, I'm, I'm butthurt <laughs> over Bucephalus. Dude, man. Yeah, that was the thing. I like, think... Bucephalus' death meant nothing because we, yeah. like, we get no Bucephalus throughout the film. Nope. We get brown so, horse. So Bucephalus is... Uh, death and uh, and Alexander's you know wound, which proves you know not mortal, uh, come from the same spear. It's a really, mm -hmm. really cool, very gnarly shot where yeah. a spear rips through the horse and into Alexander. Yeah. At which yeah. point the pink filter starts. I'm just like speculating here. I'm not a horse doctor or anything, <laughs> a, hor a horse chemist or anything like that. But um, I don't know. Maybe it's like some sort of psychotropic effect that the horse blood has on Alexander <laughs> yeah. as it enters his body. So does he um, like get horse strength and horse wisdom and horse cock after that? <laughs> Hell yeah. It could be. It could yeah. be. 
you know, there is that famous Jeopardy appearance where uh, Oliver Stone showed up high on horse blood. <laughs> and went on to win. <laughs> And this was a particularly strong, famous horse. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very I mean, regular pungent. horse yeah. bread will take you Powerful places you've never no, been. No, this before, is not. But... This is not mids horse bread. Right. This is right, like. Yeah. This isn't beasters. You know. This is a. Uh, this is primo Hindu Kush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hindu Kush horse blood. Yeah. Um. Wow. That's funny. I imagine. Yeah. I'm now. I'm like envisioning like an alternate take where like they do the classic action film shot where like the spear is coming for Alexander and Bucephalus is like, no, and, like, <laughs> and, like takes the spear and he's like, Bucephalus, my friend. Oh, it, that would have been that would have been primo. So that, sick. Would, that, that would have immediately been the best scene in the entire film. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Not only should Bucephalus have been in the film more, he should have talked. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and they have they they've had the technology to do that for years. Yeah. I mean, they did it on Mister Ed with peanut butter. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I think that would have been cool. Um, again, like the the history they're referencing in this film is basically just stuff guys made up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, just make. I mean, they talk about curses and stuff like that. Make a horse talk. Yeah, why yeah. not have him just be That's like, "You can deal. do you know? it, Alexander. I believe in you." <laughs> don't give up now remember me and the shadow from the start of the film and yeah. then they do that at the end too and bucephalus is spooked by the sun even though bucephalus has been in like 50 major battles yeah. but like at this last minute he's like oh wait my shadow and now there's like it's you and me man and if bucephalus yeah. could just look up and be like honestly dude you're right all right let's do this like that would have made <laughs> it so much better yeah i think i think we should start a uh, bucephalus cut community I'll Absolutely, the Bucephalus cut. The pink <laughs> Bucephalus <laughs> film. Yep. Um, but yeah, so you know, like we were saying, the battle just sort of ends um, without really it being known, like exactly how it ends. And then Alexander is just like, "All right, guys, we're going home." <clears throat> um, so it says after six years in the east, they made it back to Babylon, and Alexander then just like took two more wives, you know. And then before no, that, just... it's important that he takes them, like, the stupidest way. Yeah. And they make a point of that. He, like, he like looks at the map and thinks, like, let's take the shortest route back and takes them through, like, straight desert the whole way. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. on the way out, they'd taken a meandering path to conquer cities, not yeah. thinking, like, well, the cities are probably placed strategically where there's, like, water and resources. And they cut yeah. straight across desert the whole way back, and, like, a quarter of his, his army dies. And they yep. say, like, this was his greatest error. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he, you could tell he was kind of kind of phoned it in <laughs> yeah. for getting back home. <laughs> He's kind of more Alexander the Good at this point. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Alexander the Okay. Eh. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, Hephaestion dies of an illness, and um, basically Alexander just loses his mind and descends into tyranny. And he nearly kills Rakshana. Um, he also uh, sees his mother as medusa in a huge goblet of wine mm-hmm. um this is clearly when he gets poisoned and you get it i think i feel like the movie was trying to say that alexander could tell that like knew that he was being poisoned or something like that or he knew something or he was, was up hallucinating and he just, from it or something yeah and he just he drinks it anyway drinks the entire like massive fucking goblet of wine in one go yeah it's a bowl um it's like yeah. a, like an amphora yeah, as all of the uh, all of his angry followers are like staring intently at him, and he's just like, just looking back at them. He's like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll drink the poison. Who cares?" Yeah. And he's got his uh, lion's head on his head, like Hercules. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're or all like, dressed uh, up like uh, yeah. different gods and stuff. And he's yeah, got yeah. his Hercules hat on, and he sees which his all, is Medusa. also something Commodus did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. So yeah, the wine's poisoned, and Alexander is just like laying there dying, um, and which was just like uh, the start of the film. And I actually, I was the way that this is shot. You know, Alexander holds up the ring, and that's the first scene of the movie, and then he drops it, and then this one shows him again holding it up and dropping it as he dies. And I was wondering if like Oliver Stone was trying to make an allusion to Citizen Kane. Because that's also like the first and last scene in Citizen Kane where he drops the snow globe. Yeah. <laughs> like is... he does the same thing <laughs> such a yep. depressing point <laughs> yeah like yeah, i'm watching this i'm like i know i was watching this so i was like don't fuck it t- this guy seriously is doing citizen kane right now oh, woof. 
Yeah, I mean, I was going to say I wasn't sure what point exactly he was trying to make by opening with Alexander's death, because yeah. it's like it is, you know, compared to his wounding in the battle where Hephaestion dies, it's pretty anticlimactic. He gets poisoned. We yeah. know from a film, people try to poison him. OK, pretty anticlimactic. It's not like it's the most famous thing about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then it's also like. Yeah, I mean, watching this movie, like even if they started with him as a kid. I mean, he lived 2,000 years ago. Obviously, he died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could guess that part. No, no spoilers. I could, no I could, spoilers. That's it. I figured he, that would happen. I, you really maybe don't need yeah. to open with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know, man. I, 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 I was just wondering if that's what he was doing. The same shit, dude. He drops the ring and it breaks. Um, Right. Oh, it's gotta and, be, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> ring was sort of the symbol, like, whoever he passed the ring to would be the successor, and then he, like, sees, like, he hallucinates, like, an eagle from Zeus, and yeah. they make it kind of clear that he's, is he trying to, like, give it back to, like, his his god dad? Because, like, there's the yeah. trope throughout the whole movie that he's the son of Zeus, which, like, yeah. they almost sort of confirm in a weird way, narratively, like, they get yeah. to almost, almost the point where they're like, yeah, and maybe he really was, and it's like, get the fuck out of here, like, yeah, <laughs> that's a cool yeah. thing that they, like, talk about, but anyway, um, yeah, and so he, like, I, yeah, hands it like... to the hallucination eagle, yeah, and, uh, then everybody, like, starts... They say they, like, start fighting over his body, and as they're, like, talking about that, then they start to show them literally fighting over his body. <laughs> like, yeah. Ptolemy stands, like, straddling him, and is like, we've got to get along! And then some other guy, like, grabs the corpse, and, like... <laughs> it's kind of a Weekend at Bernie's type... If there's a sequel, it'd be mm -hmm. cool if it was sort of in that vein, like a Weekend at Bernie's type of deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny. I do, like, uh, at one point... Um... Angelina Jolie tells uh, tells Alexander that Zeus is his dad, and that she like you know she had sex with Zeus, and Alexander was like, dude, like a third of the women in this fucking <laughs> in the city say that they were uh, that they uh, had sex with Zeus, and right. that their kid is Zeus's kid. Yeah. Um, but if you listen to mythology, yeah. they might be right because Zeus. Yeah, they they might. Yeah, not a good he, dude. He be he be turning into a goose and shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, all <laughs> yeah. sorts of creatures. Bulls. Yeah. Bulls. Yeah, snakes yeah. and Beast. shit. Yeah, you know, women um, just can't resist a goose. <laughs> yeah. You're telling yeah. me. No. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so Bagoas, uh, you know, as Alexander is, you know, laying dying, uh, Bagoas just like kind of hangs out with him until the end. Um, you know, his last true friend, I guess. And uh, everyone is like asking for a successor to be named. Um, although, you know, as Alexander is dying, I thought there was, like, one cool shot where you just see, like, the silhouette of a battle, like, really quickly on the scene. That's one of his, like, kind of, like, dying visions. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but yep, so he drops his ring and it shatters, uh, you know, Citizen Kane style. And then his followers, like, just fight over this succession. And, um... And somehow doesn't Ptolemy come out on top? He gets, he gets a kingdom, or does everybody, everybody sort of so, divvied it up? The remaining yeah. Diadochi, or Diadochi, yeah. divvy up the kingdom, and, and some of them live and some of them die. So Macedon yeah. proper, like in Greece, mm -hmm. the Greek peninsula, and this is what I was kind of alluding to before. So there's a, a, the original fight is between two camps who one, one camp wants uh, Alexander's handicapped brother to be made king, and like the clear uh, idea behind that is they'll be able to kind of just get him to do whatever Obviously, they want. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other camp, uh, so in, in reality, so in the movie, like, as he's dying, Roxana comes in and says, it's a boy. But in reality, yeah. she was only, like, two months pregnant. So the All other right. camp says, let's wait. If it's a boy, her son should be the king. Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, Philip can be regent, but he'll have no actual power. And we, as his counselors, will run the country. So what ends up happening is, lo and behold, she does give birth to a boy, which is named Alexander. Uh, he yep. gets nominal rights. So if you, like, look him up, officially he was had all the same titles as Alexander. So he was... Uh, um, the Basilius of Macedonia, the Hegemon of Greece, the Lord of Asia, the Shahanshah of Persia. But in reality, the other guys start divvying it up. So Seleucus yep. gets most of Asia Minor, which becomes the Seleucid Empire. Ptolemy yep. gets Egypt and is the descendant uh, or the ancestor of Cleopatra. So up mm -hmm. until that period, the rulers, the pharaohs of Egypt are Greeks. Um, Northern Greece and like Epirus get divvied up by some of his generals. Macedon goes to the Antigonid dynasty. Um, hmm. And then, like, you know, the rest of Asia, like Bactria and stuff, 
pretty quickly gets retaken. Like most of his conquests in like India and further further than what we would now consider like Turkey um, kind mm -hmm. of immediately reverts back to like native rulership. But uh, the successor states last until the Romans come along uh, like two and a half centuries later and knock them yeah. all out. So the Romans defeat uh, the successors of, um, I forget who took over in um, Greece. They knock them out. They knock out the Macedonians. Yeah. They go take Egypt, and then they go and take out the Seleucids. Yeah. Um, so like the successors of Alexander, their dynasties endure for centuries. And they set mm. up some, they basically spread Greek culture um, throughout that whole part of the world for, for a long time. Um, so we talk about his like legacy as being a short one, but in reality, it, it had a really long lasting impact. And the only thing that could sort of usurp uh, the legacy of Alexander was like an even more insane race of psychopaths who were the Romans. <laughs> who were just like, yeah. just like, yeah, this is awesome and everything, but uh, no, this is all ours. And um, yeah. yeah. It's 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 kind of amazing, like the the succession of crazier groups of people who just like keep conquering and reconquering and bananas. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, so uh, you know, they fight over the succession, and then we go back uh, back to the start where it's just Ptolemy, and uh, he's just like as Cam was talking about earlier. He just recount recounts all the events after Alexander's death, uh, including that his family was killed. Uh, which he says, mm -hmm. um, and then Ptolemy admits to executing uh, Alexander in a conspiracy. He just straight up says, "Like, yeah, we poisoned that motherfucker." <laughs> and um, then he ends by saying that the Library of Alexandria fire destroyed all the memoirs that were written about all of this. Well, I think not to nitpick, but I think what he was actually saying is like he said we killed him by inaction. Mm -hmm. So like we knew that he mm -hmm. was going to drive himself to the brink. And mm -hmm. we didn't believe him. Like, we never believed in, like, uniting the peoples of Earth. We just wanted, like, money and power. And yeah. honestly, the only thing holding us back from that was, like, this, like, idealistic, like, crazy person. And none of us stood in the way of him getting killed. And he then alludes to um, Cassander being the one okay. who killed him. And, it, and that's actually yeah. the, the current actual historical consensus is that Cassander had Alexander killed and had... Um, his son and brother killed um, because he went on to take over Greece. I think it was Cassander. And mm -hmm. um, he's played by Jonathan Reese Myers, who mm -hmm. was in that show, The Tudors. So it's that guy, if you're watching the movie. Um, he, yep. he's And they sort of, like, hint at it. Like, they show when Alexander's dying, he does, like, one of these, like, sketchy looks where he's like, oh, mm. <laughs> just everything's going as planned um yeah but yeah the, the, and so they also talk about in the movie how uh there were for a long time thought to have been um diaries of alexander and the only yeah. reference we have to these because they talk about ptolemy's memoirs burning um but there are secondhand accounts of a lot of this stuff in like later historians particularly roman historians who would quote it in their works and we have some of those um, and so there was thought to be a set of uh, first-hand diaries of Alexander, but those were later discovered to, to likely have been forgeries by, by uh, Cassander, who basically just like wanted to make Alexander look like an idiot so no one was mad at him for killing him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As you do. I mean, yep. yeah. Honestly, Evan, when I inevitably kill you and take over this podcast, <laughs> you better believe that I'm going to release your pod notes and they're going to be racist as hell. And yeah. he's gonna be like, oh man, okay, like he had to do yeah. it. I, I Posthumous don't blame cancellation. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't forgive like cold blooded murder often, but this is gonna be one of those times, Cam. You're free yeah. to go. And then the judge yep. claps and everyone claps. It's gonna be awesome, yeah. dude. I can forgive cold blooded murder, but I do draw the line at racist podcast notes. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. Oh man. It's a hell of a Yeah, movie. so anyway, that's uh that was Oliver Stone's Alexander. Just uh Dreadful movie. Absolutely terrible. How many stars do you guys give it? How I mean, many, okay, uh, check it out. How many Hephaestians? <laughs> how many Hephaestian thighs would I give it out of five? Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to go to, I'm going to be generous. Like, I watched it twice. I watched it like a month ago, Evan, when you first uh, threw, threw out the invite. And then I watched it uh, again this week to refresh my memory and it is a it is a jumbled mess that fails on on pretty by pretty much any metric. 
that you know you'd want to grade a movie on but like except for the performances i guess the casting and the performances mm-hmm. were excellent if you leave aside the goofy fucking accents like yeah, yeah everybody yeah, everybody sure. here is going for it and i appreciate that and i'm not like a big like actor or performance driven film viewer like i i literally don't care about most um most actors and their performances and like unless they're <laughs> Uh, they stand out in some way. And I feel like this, there was a ton of standout performances in this, everybody just giving it their all. And, you know, you've got to, at some point you've got to give some amount of credit to the director for getting those performances out of those people and capturing them and featuring them in a way that, you know, uh, is is effective. Um, And and that's pretty much the only level that, that uh, on which this film works, but it gets, it gets too Hephaestian thighs for that. Okay. All right. Uh, Patrick, how about you? Yeah, um, so I'll, I'll concur with uh, with a, a lot of what Ian said there. I was going to say I give it maybe one one yeah. Hephaestian thigh, maybe one and a half. But again, I only watched it one time, so maybe every time you watch it, it gets you know one star better. Yeah, um, I mean, I, that, I don't know. That seems like what Zack Snyder's Justice League was for Ian. <laughs> Rob, it seemed right, like over right. the course of that podcast, you got Stockholm syndrome. It was his white started, whale. Like enjoying no, it. No, no, no. I knew it sucked. <laughs> I knew it sucked the first time, and the fifteenth watch only confirmed that, that it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I feel yeah, like I I've thought. Gotta... Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I thought the uh, the second part of the film, whether in India, I thought worked a lot better than the first bit. Mm. Uh, and if it was just the chronological part there, like, you know, the empire kind of, you know, reaching its end and and the the, uh, uh, you know, engine block kind of seizing up on the whole thing without having to cut back and show stuff from twenty five years earlier, I thought it would have been a lot better. Uh, you know, see, showing, um, I think, you know, Colin Farrell did a good job and again, you know, credit to Oliver there as well. Uh, you know, I thought Alexander's crumbling, uh, mental condition, uh, was, uh, you know, handled pretty well. Uh, if you kind of pretended that everything before the intermission was really good and very top notch and like led up to this very naturally, uh, you could, yeah, kind of pretend that you're watching a pretty good movie that uh, drags, you know, as it enters its fourth hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, um, man. yeah I, I'm not sure if we how much we talked about the uh, the CGI eagle there. I think we mentioned that a couple times, but uh, to be clear, shit. you get about twenty. You get about twenty minutes of that eagle. Yeah. yeah. Um who I believe, according to Oliver Stone, you'll have to go back and, and watch it again, Ian, with the director's commentary, oh, yeah. is canonically canonically the same eagle uh, as that from Salisbury Hill. Oh, for sure. You know, which makes... Yeah, so in a lot of ways, you know, Alexander, you know, kind of poisoned, you know, dying, leaving his empire behind, a lot like Peter Gabriel getting kicked out of Genesis. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, and I, I think, you know, just like Salisbury Hill, I believe the eagle in this film is meant to represent Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> well, I mean, fam- famously, Peter Gabriel, once The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway had come out, he wept because there were no more records to conquer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that, like, when you're looking at this movie, and I think you guys both pretty, pretty handily summed up... Um, a lot of what I would say about like this as a film, um, I, I almost want to give it two scores, like one as like a guy watching it, and then I'd have to say like the one and a half to two thighs is pretty much it. Um, yeah. But uh, as the co-host of a shitty history podcast, um, <laughs> there are things about this movie that we didn't really talk about today for like obvious reasons because it wasn't really the point. But the set design in this movie kind of rocks. Um, the costumes yeah. are pretty yeah. cool. They really nailed. Yes. Um, you know, I know we talked about you know the lack of need for describing the Macedonian right and things like that. But there are little shining moments there where just purely like as a history buff, yeah. um, that kind of rocks. And they did sort of nail the Battle of Gaugamela and the look of the yep. Persians versus the Macedonians. The Macedonians with their super long Sarissa spears and mm-hmm. like how that yep, was yep. like used to great effect. So, you know, again, without going like and waxing poetic on that, for that, I mean, I would say 
and a lot of these historical epics get that wrong, right? Like you look at a movie like Braveheart, where basically everything about it, it's a way better movie, right? Still cheesy, but it's a better movie, but everything about it is pretty much historically inaccurate. You look at a movie like this, it's sort of the inverse, where like as a cinematic experience, it's pretty, pretty low on the list, but they, yeah. they actually did a great job of recreating this period visually. Um, and so for that, like, if we're looking at it as history, which I guess is what we're Evan and I are supposed to sort of kind of try to do, uh, kind of, I would definitely give it more like four thighs. Um, yeah, because they did they did a pretty bang up job visually, um, bad CGI and stuff aside, and weird pink filters. Um, <laughs> yeah. The set design and the costumes and everything it it seemed pretty believable um, in that regard. Yeah. So I would say one and a half to two for the movie, uh, four for the 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 honest like clear effort that went into recreating a time period yeah yeah i uh i gave the movie one hefeshton thigh uh <laughs> it was just like oh dreadfully boring <laughs> it was just like such a boring movie however specifically the battle of galgamela i agree with cam i give that four hefeshton thighs there's one part where they show them like basically like, start like ramping up the sarissa which, like, you know, if you, like, recreations, like, watching the Macedonian phalanx move, it basically looked like a lawnmower as the Sarissas are coming down and people are, like, moving backwards. And they, it, like, I definitely was, like, pretty amped up right yeah. at the start of that battle when, like, they all, they, like, get their Sarissas up and start bringing them down. I was just like, oh, hell yeah. And you gotta, hand it to, <laughs> you gotta hand it to the Macedonians for their innovation, right? Because the whole yeah. thing with the Sarissa... So the phalanx is like the dominating force in Greek warfare, and it's guys, yeah. shield, spear, everybody saw the 100, right? Yeah. Like that, and that mm -hmm. worked for a long-ass time. And the Macedonians were like, how do we beat the other Greek states? They're so good at phalanxes. And then Philip is like, honestly, what if our Triple spears are twice as long? And everybody's like, <laughs> dude, Philip, where have you been? Yeah. And then they do it, and it works, and they yeah. conquer half the planet because they literally Holy were just shit. like, what if our spears were way bigger? And, yeah. and it works. And yeah, it, they're, they're so long that, that you have to, like, strap the shield yeah. to their shoulders. They're not even, like, holding the shields. So it's just, like, kind of, like, strapped to your shoulder because you're holding this, like, fucking, like, 12-foot-long uh, pike. Yeah, the, they have to counter The original yeah. arms race, baby. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other big thing that helped them win was cavalry, and they show that a lot in the movie. Like, yeah. the other Greeks thought cavalry was for cowards. Like, a real man would yeah. stand on his own two feet and kill someone like an adult. And the Macedonians were like, yeah, but honestly, we've got a lot of horses, so... We're going to use horses and that and big, yeah. long spears. Anyway, I liked it. But I don't think we yeah. need to drag that out any longer. This is a long-ass show. It took us a while <laughs> getting going, and I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Um, I've watched – I've listened to both of your shows almost completely. Uh, yeah. And, like, these are these are the takes we need when we're going to have a movie <laughs> oh, episode because yeah. you guys both yeah. have a really great – handle on uh the sort of shit that we want to talk about when we want to talk yep. about a bad history movie you're um, too kind too kind uh wh to yeah. whom do i send the invoice for seven hours of my life though oh yeah you can send that to evan evan's gonna Excellent. be handling all of that yeah. um, what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> you oh. can cc that to a mr o stone uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, we're, we're billing his time for that. I do want to petition that. HBO for the pink cut, though. I'm going to see if yeah. that works. It worked for Zach. We're going to see if we can get our boy Ollie on board. I want the five-hour pink cut of Alexander. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely have to have you guys on again to go through some more Oliver Stone movies. The JFK one would be awesome. Oh, yeah. So Everybody needs to read Libra as, uh, as their homework for that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do want to read that, too. <laughs> um, before we uh, wrap this up, do you guys want to remind everybody again, like, where they can check you guys out, your projects, anything that you want, you know, to just put out there and, and talk about? Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, so uh, I am a co-host of a podcast called This Is Bad, um, and it's uh, essentially just about things that are not good. Uh, <laughs> primarily during this, our first season, uh, the uh, new CBS sitcom, The United States of Al, uh, which uh, is a Chuck Lorre production uh, detailing the uh, laugh-along exploits of a <laughs> uh, Afghan translator who uh, moves in with his alcoholic Marine friend in Columbus, Ohio. Um, which, I mean, honestly, as a premise... Like, how could you go wrong? Right, right, yeah. Um, you know, and as, as, as the producers of the show have made clear, including Reza Aslan, um, uh, we consider ourselves the only podcast currently on air dedicated to hurting Reza Aslan's feelings. <laughs> um, 
uh, you know, it's not just a show about the war in Afghanistan. It's also just a show about the coolest 36 year olds in Ohio. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so we talk a lot about that. We talk about YouTube grifters. We talk about, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember what else we really talked. Basically just those things, YouTube grifters and, uh, and bad sitcoms. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, uh, I would like to say that your podcast, This Is Bad, has the best use of a laugh track oh. I've ever heard. <laughs> I've, I've really, I have not seen that. one second of this show, and I'm, I'm actually considering trying to find a way to watch some of it so that when you guys put out episodes, I can kind of like know. I already like the show with no context, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of into the idea of watching some of this dumbass fucking TV show. Well, there's, there's never been a better time to subscribe to the Paramount Plus Network. Uh, <laughs> Paramount Plus... <laughs> Uh, uh, the app does not work on any platform, um, <laughs> but it is the only place to legally stream the United States of Al, uh, Blue Bloods, many of the NCIS series, and The Godfather Part Two. Whoa! Okay, and also also all the new Star on the Trek Paramount shows. Plus app. Wild. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, of This Is Bad, not not of United States of Al. I've only watched one episode, but it's not... I mean, I feel like it's helpful to get background on the show so you at least have a face to go with the names of the various characters that Pat and his co-hosts are talking about, but... Uh, we use the names wrong. We, we do not know the characters' names. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't you matter. They're all know. absolute ciphers. Um, if yeah. you want to hear more of me talking uh, with my with my bandmate Nat, we just wrapped a 15 episode run of Miscarriage of Justice, which was eight recap episodes and seven interview episodes talking about the uh, cinematic glory that is the Zack Snyder uh, cut of Justice League. I don't know why we did that. It just Nat and I were both struck by how horrible the movie was, and it was. Horrible in ways I didn't even think a movie could be. And then uh, I'm uh, for the past few weeks, I've been uh, doing a new film focused podcast with Ross Hurt on the Rigs of Dad Patreon page called Film Basics with bassists who love film. And so that that's on his Patreon feed. Like every week we drop a new episode in which we talk about film news, uh, stuff that we've seen recently and usually we will do a mixtape of films, so based around some kind of organizing principle. Uh, we've done sci-fi stuff. We've done uh, paranoia thriller stuff. And yeah, we'll just do, do a mixtape of 10 or so movies. Oh, we did, uh, most recently we did with uh, Josh Staples from the New Trust and Velveteen. We did one, uh, we did our SNL movie draft, which was super fun, so. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Yes, so there are only 11 uh, canonical SNL films. but we, So we did side A was our canonical SNL films, and side B was uh, SNL alums and associated products. So All right. it, was, it was a whole lot Radical. of fun. That's on the Rigs of Dad Patreon if folks are interested in checking that out. Awesome. Well, I can say I've, I've, I don't know what possessed you to make Miscarriage of Justice, like the, the torture you obviously put yourself through. Uh, but it was one of those things that, like, I didn't know I needed in my life until I had it. Um, oh, awesome. Because I sat through that movie uh, with my partner, and we, we, at the end of it, were left with so many questions. And you guys really yeah. put in the work to not answer any of them, but make <laughs> me feel like make me feel like I wasn't alone in having them. And uh, yeah, I, oh, yes. the, the work was honestly stellar. It was a great oh, show. So thank you so you much, Cam. I appreciate ch that. Check them both out. Mm -hmm. uh, also highly recommend miscarriage of justice really enjoy the program i'm not just saying that because you follow me on twitter <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. but it does... I'm, I'm not going to say that listening to the show deepened my appreciation of the snyder cut um but i will say uh you know it it was nice knowing and hearing from other people who stared into that same void yeah. mm. and had that void stare back. Yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, you've you've also got this this sort of, you know, deep seated like Lovecraftian madness that just lives within you now. Yeah. Um, yeah, while you're listening to other people be like, yo, that Zack Snyder cut's actually pretty good. I was going to say, I enough didn't... people around me liked it that I started to feel yeah. like I must be fucking losing it. No. Like, yeah. am I some snob? Am I, like, some... Yeah. I don't know. I really liked Godzilla vs. Kong. Like, I don't think I'm, like, yeah. some... Well, that's because that movie's amazing. Yeah. That movie <laughs> fucking slapped. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. 
All right. Well, All right. is that is that it? I mean, thank you guys so much. This has been a, a real pleasure to have you both on. And um, yep. thanks for being willing to take the ride with us. This was a really fun one for, for me, and I, I'm sure Evan feels the same. Super yeah, fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. big fan of the show. Um, and thank you guys for having us on. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll do it again sometime. I, I, would, yeah. I would love uh, to have I you guys really on enjoyed again. it. Let's, yeah. All right. Well, thanks right. again for listening to another episode of Left on Red. Uh, this, has been, this has been our episode on Alexander. Uh, we'll have, as always, links in the uh, episode description where you can find uh, music that we use on the show, um, where you can find uh, Twitters and all kinds of dumb shit. So, uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys listening as always, and we will see you next time. Bye.